Elizabeth Hewlett, Chair of the Prince George's County Planning Board, and the Planning Board is now in session for Thursday, January 14th, 2021. Again, in an abundance of caution resulting from the global spread of the COVID-19 virus, the Planning Board continues to host virtual hearings, and today marks the 31st, 34th, excuse me, 34th virtual meeting since March of 2020. During these continued, very challenging times, we remain committed to promoting a safe and healthy environment for our public, our applicants, stakeholders, and our staff as we continue business operations to propel Prince George's County forward. I'd like to take a moment to remind everyone of the participation guidelines for our hearings. Speaker pre-registration and pre-submission of comments and exhibits, if any, is required. All participants must pre-register and all materials or exhibits, if any, must be submitted by 12 noon on the Tuesday before the planning board meeting as shown on the screen, as announced in every weekly meeting, as posted on our website, and as clearly stated in bold red on our published weekly planning board agenda. Registered speakers and presenters can join the meeting with the link provided via email from the planning board office. Online registered participants may be prompted to install GoToMeeting software in order to participate in the process. Registered speakers may also listen or participate in the meeting using a phone line utilizing the call-in number provided via the email. We ask all participants to mute your phones when not speaking and please do not put your phone on hold. To eliminate audio feedback, only one connected device with sound should be in the room at the same time. And of course, the public may continue to watch planning board meetings streamed live, or if you wish to become a person of record, you may sign up on our online web form. Please note the screen for instructions. As always, we'd like to take a moment of silence in honor of the individuals and loved ones throughout our community and the nation who passed away since our last meeting of January 7th, 2021. Within the state of Maryland, we want to remember Barbara O'Malley, age 93, who is the mother of former Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley and who served 25 plus years in the Capitol Office of former United States Senator Barbara Mikulski. We want to remember the growing number of victims of the widespread coronavirus. To date, there are nearly 23.5 million cases in the United States alone and nearly 390,000 deaths. These are people's loved ones, they're human beings, they're not statistics, but I cite these so that we will remember all of them and their families and so that everyone will take the precautions needed to be careful and to keep yourself safe. We want to remember Nancy Walker Bush Ellis, who also died of coronavirus. She was the sister of the late President George H.W. Bush and served as head of the um, uh, New England section of the NAACP Legal Defense and Education Fund. Theodore Lumpkin Jr., age 100, Tuskegee Airmen member who passed away just days short of his 101st birthday. Throughout the nation and the world, we want to remember the six individuals who lost their lives as a result of the January 6th riots at the United States Capitol. Um, I, I made some comments about this last week. Um, I won't say any more other than the whole thing was a travesty. It was uh, despicable and it's terribly, terribly unfortunate that people lost lives, people were beaten. Um, it was just terrible. Throughout the nation and the world also, Tommy Lasorda, age 93, the former Los Angeles Dodgers pitcher and Hall of Fame manager. Many will remember him. I think it was the Slim Fast com commercials. Tommy Lasorda here. Um, he was a two times World Series, uh, Series champion and a two times National League Manager of the Year. Marion Ramsey, age 73, actress known for her roles as Officer Laverne Hooks in the film franchise Police Academy. Duran Deezer D. Thompson, known for his role as Nurse Malik McGrath on the TV series ER. 
Michael Apted, age 79, British filmmaker, directed a number of films and documentaries, including Coal Miner's Daughter. Loretta Whitfield, age 79, this woman researched and developed the groundbreaking baby Whitney doll with her husband, and the black doll was designed to increase black representation within the toy in uh, industry. She was a graduate of Howard University, HU, you know, and she was a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Rod Perry, age 86, actor known for the TV series SWAT and the, auto, and the movie Autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman. Michael Kuzak, age 64, um, one of the original Special Olympics athletes who won a gold medal at, in the first competition in 1968. Of course, we extend our deepest sympathy to any of you who may have suffered a loss um, of a loved one as well. Um, we can't name everyone, we're not aware of everyone, but if you have suffered a loss in your family, we extend our hearts and prayers to you. If we may have that moment of silence, please. Thank you. So again, we're and still in the month of January. It is National Slavery and Human Trafficking Prevention Month. This is something that has, has grown exponentially and it's horrific. We cannot tolerate, condone, or be passive about human trafficking. So we want everyone to be on alert. And if you see something, someone that looks um, like they're troubled, I mean, you have to reach out for help. Um, so, so please do. It is Financial Wellness Month. Good luck with that. Get a Balanced Life Month. Good luck with that one, too. But it is National Be On Purpose Month. Um, it is January of um, 14th. And on January 14th, uh, 1690, the clarinet was invented. Um, 1956, Little Richard released his famed hit, Tutti Frutti. 1963, um, George Wallace was sworn in as governor of Alabama, and in his swearing-in address, he promoted segregation now, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. That was part of his January 14th um, inaugural. 1967, Sonny and Cher released their hit, the beat goes on. Can you say, la di da di di la di da di da 1972 was the premiere of Sanford and Son. 1975 was the 25th National um, Basketball Association All-Star Game where Walt Frazier, the fabulous New York Knicks point guard, was the MVP. Now, I have to show my bias for the New York Knicks, my hometown team, um, and then I'll leave it at that. I won't discuss my crush. Um, 1976 was the debut of Bionic Woman. 1979, United States President Jimmy Carter, then on the heels of everyone else, proposed Martin Luther King's birthday as a holiday. Um, but it was, a, um, it was fell short of, of the uh, five votes. Um, Reagan signed it into law in 1983, and it was first observed three years later. It has since been officially recognized in all 50 states as of 2001. Um, tw January 14th, 2020, Jeopardy's GOAT, the greatest of all time tournament, was won by Ken Jennings. He was the 74-time Jeopardy champion, and as of this week, was the new Jeopardy guest host. Now. Last week, we were so encouraged about our Washington team versus Tampa Bay. Most of us were rooting for our Washington team. Alas, they gave it their best. They did not prevail. But with regard to the Alabama versus Ohio State, I don't know where you were on this one, but can you just say, roll tide? <laughs> there we go. Um, as um, ESPN said, um, let's see. Well, anyway, they, it was fabulous. I'm not going to do their quote, but it was, they were just fabulous. Um, and then this weekend we have the Ravens versus Buffalo. So there's another local team we can root for on Saturday. And I did say Ravens versus Buffalo. I'm just going to say who to thunk it. I'm going to leave it at that. Um, with regard to... Um, 
planning board slides. We have the Northern Gateway Wayfinding and Signage Plan. The virtual community meeting will take place on Saturday, January 30th at 2021 at 10 a.m. And the project team will present the benefits of wayfinding and recent um, findings and offer sign design options for community input. And you can see the screen for registration address and details. The cultural art study. Join the planning department, the Department of Parks and Recreation, and the Prince George's Arts and Humanities Council for a virtual community meeting on the cultural arts impact on economic development. And that will take place on Thursday, January 28th at 7 p.m. And this meeting is part of the Prince George's County Cultural Arts Study, and it's the first comprehensive inventory and assessment of the county's widespread, diverse, and culture ecology in the county. Register by noon on Wednesday, um, January 27th. Again, see the slide for online registration link. Finally, we want to say um, happy, I'm dressed in my red and white and my pearls because I want to say happy 108th Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated Founders Day yesterday, January 13th, um, 2021. It was founded, of course, January 13, 1913, um, and that's my beloved sorority. But I do want to, equal time, I do want to say an early happy 113th um, Alpha Kappa Alpha Founders Day tomorrow, January 15th. You hear that, Vice Chair Bailey? And... And we want to wish Thank those Sora's a uh, um, happy anniversary as well. And also on um, the 16th, happy 101st anniversary to the Sora's of um, Zeta Phi Beta sorority. We also want to take a moment to say, to wish everyone a happy and safe Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday. Now, we're going to be celebrating that on Monday. We understand that there's some... Um, concern and threats um, throughout this whole next week. So we encourage everyone to be safe. Um, but we do want to honor Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, who himself um, pushed forward through all the threats, through all the violence, ultimately succumbed to the ultimate act of violence. But we cannot let people who threaten us um, keep us from living our lives or from doing what's right. Yes, we need to be careful, but we must always, always do what is right. To paraphrase Dr. Martin Luther King at that. And finally, I want to close out with a very special happy birthday to our planning board administrator, Jessica Jones. We want to wish her the absolute best. Happy birthday, Jessica. And yes, she is officially embarrassed now. Um, we also want to take a moment to thank, for those of you who are participating today or who are watching, who are in our listening or viewing audience, we can never say it enough how much we appreciate your flexibility, your cooperation, and your support as we continue to keep our planning functions moving forward in the safest fashion in our no longer new normal. We remain thankful for our many, many blessings and we ask that each one of you make every effort to be kind, to stay safe, to look out for one another, to reach out to others who, with whom you may not have had contact in a long time, mend or repair any relationships that need to be repaired, stay strong, stay resilient, stay vigilant, and remain ever hopeful as we strive to get through the myriad challenging times together. Thank you. With that, uh, I'm going to um, commence. We have all five planning board members present. I'm going to do a, call, a roll call. Madam Vice Chair? Present. Commissioner Washington? Present. Commissioner Geraldo? I vote yes. All right, there we go. Okay, Commissioner Duana? I vote maybe then. Okay. All right. Well, suffice it to say, all five are present. Um, we are also joined by our senior legal counsel, Peter Goldsmith. Um, we have um, our chief of development review, James Hunt. Um, we also have in the hearing room, we have our uh, planning board administrator, Jessica, birthday girl, Jessica Jones. 
we have our planning, um, our technical hearing writer, I'm sorry, Lee Kratka. We have our planning director, Andre Checkley. We have Kenny Flanagan with us, who is our senior planner, a tech, planet technician, who is working all of these PowerPoints for us. So you will guide him through where, wherever you need to go with, in terms of our PowerPoints. And behind the scenes, like the wizard behind the curtain, we have Ryan Cron, who is our media, um, visual media specialist, who is really working this. So we want to thank Ryan as well. And with that, I think I got everybody. And with that, I'm going to proceed with the agenda. The first item is the item two, which are the draft minutes from the planning board meetings of December 17th, 2020, and January 7th, 2021. Is there a motion? Okay, well, we have um, a motion by Commissioner Washington, and we're going to take your motion, Madam Vice Chair, as a second. Um, so we have a motion and a second. Um, is there any discussion? Madam Vice Chair? But I. Commissioner Washington? Aye. Commissioner Geraldo? Aye. Commissioner Dorner? But aye. Okay, and next, thank you. The ayes have it 5 0. Next, we have with us um, the draft resolutions um, and final plats items 4D and 4G. That's the consent agenda. I'm not sure if anyone wishes to speak, and if not, is there a motion? Um, yeah, is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion from Madam Vice Chair, seconded by Commissioner Washington. Madam Vice Chair. But aye. Commissioner Washington. Aye. Commissioner Dorner. But aye. Commissioner Geraldo. Aye. The ayes have it 5-0 to approve the um, consent agenda. The next item on our agenda is the Comprehensive Design Plan, CDP 0901-01, um, uh, the village is at Timothy Branch. Um, I do have a CDP statement which I have to read. Um, this hearing is being held under the General Enabling Authority of the Land Use Article, Annotated Code of Maryland, and conducted in accordance with the specific requirements and procedures of Section 27-516 through 532 of the Prince George's County Code and the Maryland Administrative Procedures Act. The purpose of this hearing is to consider the applicant's submission of a comprehensive design plan proposal and to consider that plan in relation to the criteria set forth in Section 27-521 of the Prince George's County Code. All persons who wish to participate in this hearing um, uh, must be sworn in. Um, so let me just take a moment now before I finish with my statement to see Who's, who intends to speak today. Um, so we have Mr. Bossy, you're present, right? Okay, I see Mr. Bossy present. Yes, Madam Chair. Mr. De Tedesco, are you present? There you are. Good morning, Madam, good morning, Madam Chair, I'm present. Okay, good morning. Um, Michael Gardner? Uh, yes, I'm present. Okay, Mike Linhart? Present. Okay, Michael Novi? Present. Uh, Mark Ferguson. I'm here, Madam Madam Chair. I'm um, Jessica McMahon. I get that wrong every time, don't I? Yeah, you got it right, McMahon. That's okay, correct. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Is she present? Okay, so the one time I get it right, she's not here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll let her know. For okay, sure. thank you, thank you. Um, Paul Woodburn. Well, we also have Mr. Novi from Ben Dyer, so that's okay. Michael German? Present. Okay, wonderful. Earl Mitchell? Present. Wonderful, okay. Um, so that concludes my speakers. So this does not include Mr. Bossi, or it does, and it does not include you, Mr. Tedesco, but all, per, all the rest of you who intend to speak before the board must be sworn in. So in the presence of Almighty God, do you solemnly promise and declare that the testimony you are about to give before this board is the truth to the best of your knowledge and belief? Our now, Ferguson does. It was, you know, we were going to turn to this up. Okay, somebody's being recorded. Okay, so Mike, uh, Ms. Mark Ferguson does. Um, Michael Gardner? Yes, okay. I do. Okay, Mr. Linhart? I do. Mr. Novi. 
Okay, I didn't hear from um, Ms. McMahon or um, Mr. Woodburn. Have either of them signed on since? Okay, Michael German. Yes, ma'am. You do. Okay, and Earl Mitchell. Earl Mitchell. Now he's he signed. He's he responded present. Earl Mitchell, are you on a on a a call a phone? Yes. Okay. Okay. So there. So um. And do you agree to the oath? Yes, I do. Okay, thank you. Um, this it, it, just for um, your for the tech team, it looks like he's caller number four. Okay, thank you. Um, yep. This this proceeding is being recorded, as are, are all of them, and so therefore any exhibit must be properly marked and referred to when discussed. Um, so with that, um, I'm just going to go uh, proceed. So now that I've identified that everyone's there, we also have additional backup. We have the applicant's proposed revised findings and conditions. Um, we also have the streetscape rendering, and we have um, a letter to myself from the Brandywine North Key Civic Association. With that, Mr. Bossy, you are on. Oh, wait, wait, do we have um, the zoning um, here, um, People's Zoning Council? Mr. Brown, are you on? Yes, ma'am, I am here. Okay, thank you. And so joining us today is the People's um, Zoning Council, Mr. Stan Derwin Brown. Um, thank you. Okay, Mr. Boston, you're on. Yep, good morning, Madam Chairwoman and members of the Planning Board. Uh, happy 2021. Uh, so item 10 this morning is the Comprehensive Design Plan, CDP 0901-01. Uh, this is for the villages at Timothy Branch. Uh, this is an amendment to the CDP that is following up on the District Council's recent approval of an amendment to the underlying basic plan for this site, which is A-9988-C-01. Uh, the modification to the basic plan provides for mixed retirement development of the site in lieu of the previously approved mixed-use development, uh, which did include residential, commercial, retail, and office uses. Uh, as Madam Chairwoman uh, noted, we did receive the applicant's backup on Tuesday, and that is in your record as she indicated. Uh, so with that, I'll just move on to slide two, please. Uh, here, the property is in Planning Area 85A, Council District 9. Uh, this is the Brandywine area of Southern Prince George's County. Slide three, please. Uh, more specifically, the site is located on the south side of Brandywine Road, approximately a half mile east of its intersection with US 301 uh, Robert Crane Highway. Number four, please. Uh, the subject portion of Timothy Branch is a 72.4 acre LAC zone uh, area. And this is just north of the uh, RM zone portion of Timothy Branch, which uh, has been in front of the board over the past year and is uh, currently in various phases of development. Uh, located between those two, uh, we see uh, the area where there is an existing warehouse in the EIA and I-3 zones. Slide five, please. A uh, portion of the site is located within the military installation overlay zone. Uh, this is for noise associated with Joint Base Andrews. So at the time of SDP, noise uh, mitigation may be required in that area. Slide six, please. Uh, as illustrated in the aerial image here, development to Timothy Branch is underway in accordance with prior approvals. Matta Woman Drive has been constructed through the subject site. Uh, this is the roadway shown here bisecting uh, the site from north to south. Uh, some grading and some infrastructure work has also been completed in the LAC zone area, again, uh, in accordance with prior approvals. Slide seven, please. Uh, in general, our subject uh, site slopes eastward toward the Timothy Branch Stream Valley, which is uh, along the eastern property boundary. Slide eight, please. Uh, Matta Woman Drive, uh, which is shown here in red, again bisecting the site uh, as a master planned arterial roadway. Uh, at its northern end, it connects with Maryland 381, that's Brandywine Road, uh, which is shown in green and is classified as a collector. Slide 9, please. Uh, the CDP amendment that is before the board today seeks to revise the proposed development plan for, again, the LAC zone portion of Timothy Branch. 
to make it consistent with the recent uh, amendment to the underlying basic plan. And the amendment to the basic plan and the proposed CDP provide for a mixed retirement development in two pods on the east and west side of Mattawoman Drive. A total of 212 dwelling units are proposed, consisting of 102 single-family detached and 110 single-family semi-attached uh, duplex units. The associated on-site recreational facilities proposed include a community building, dog park, bocce ball court, and pickleball courts, uh, as well as a gazebo sitting area and the continuation of the Timothy Branch Trail uh, northward to Brandywine Road. The previously approved non-residential uses for the subject site are proposed to be removed for the CDP, which is consistent with the basic plan uh, amendment. Slide 10, please. Uh, this illustrative image shows the subject site at the northern end of the larger Timothy Branch development. And we see that existing warehouse parcel to the southwest of the subject site and the remainder of Timothy Branch where development is ongoing uh, to the south of that. Slide 11, please. Uh, the CDP amendment also includes an amendment to the associated Type 1 Tree Conservation Plan, uh, which staff has reviewed and found those changes to be acceptable. Uh, Madam Chair, at this time, I do want to briefly address the applicant's proposed revisions to the findings or recommendations of the staff report. Uh, and I do want to thank Mr. Tedesco. And, and let's, um, let's more have that marked as applicant's exhibit number one. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so I do want to thank Mr. Tedesco and his team for uh, coordinating with staff over the past uh, several days to work out some of the language of these conditions. Um, you know, staff is in agreement with the proposed revisions, except for the insertion of the three words Brandywine Road Club into the first line of Condition 30. Uh, this was discussed with the applicant, and it's my understanding they are in agreement with that modification. Uh, so in conclusion, staff has found the proposed amendment to this CDP and associated tree conservation plan uh, do conform with the requirements of the zoning ordinance and prior approvals as detailed in our staff report. Uh, we are pleased to recommend that the board approve CDP 0901-01 and TCP 1-151-90-03 with the conditions included in the technical staff report as modified by the applicant's exhibit, again, with the exception of uh, uh, that one modification staff has requested to condition 30. Uh, for this condition, we do recommend the board adopt language as submitted by the applicant, but again, with the omission of the words Brandywine Road Club from that sentence. Uh, this concludes our presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. As always, um, great job, Mr. Bossi. Thank you so much. It's a smooth landing here. Um, okay, are there any questions, Madam Vice Chair? No questions, thank you. Okay, Commissioner Washington. No questions, thank you. Commissioner Dorner. Uh, no major questions. I just wanted to find out. Um, in terms of the definition of the mixed retirement community, um, how do we how do we define that? And this might be something more for Mr. Tedesco um, later on. Is, is it is it defined by age, and then um, does that preclude people from certain categories coming in, and and then not have to worry about schools and stuff? I, I know that's sort of tangential to this, but I didn't see that in the staff report. It was something that kind of came up as I was thinking about it. Okay, so. Um, do, well, uh, um, Mr. Bassi, do you uh, care to answer it or Mr. Tedesco? Uh, I'm, I'm happy, Madam Chair, okay. to offer at least a brief response. Okay. Um, that's actually defined in the in the zoning ordinance definitions. Um, I apologize, I don't have the exact definition in front of me, um, but Mr. Tedesco may be able to elaborate on on the points of the uh, second part of your question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and also, then we have um, Commissioner Geraldo. No questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay. And thank you, Mr. Okay. Um, with that, we can turn to Mr. Tedesco. Thank you, oh, Madam excuse Chair. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse um, me. Mr. Brown, your camera's on, and I did that. So I'm, you're not triggering. Um, me. So, 
Um, Mr. Brown, do you have any questions? There you go. And it's good to see you, I Mr. Brown. Okay. Good to see you as well. No questions. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right, Mr. Tedesco, you're on. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the Planning Board. Uh, for the record, Matthew Tedesco with the law firm of Acme Hosey here on behalf of the applicant, uh, Timothy Branch Incorporated. Um, you have already done a fairly thorough roll call given the fact that this is a CDP required for sworn testimony, so I won't go back through all of our team members, but um, I'm happy to be accompanied by all of the consultants and my client and team members uh, representing this, this project. Um, I also just want to further embarrass Ms. Jones by saying happy birthday. Uh, birthdays are important dates for all of us, so I want to acknowledge her very special day today. So happy birthday to Ms. Jones. And um, I can tell she's smiling of, beneath her mask. At <laughs> <laughs> a sequence of our presentation, I did want to just address uh, Commissioner Dorner's question. Uh, I guess one of the benefits of uh, doing these virtually is that when those types of questions come up, I can very quickly go to uh, LIS and pull up the definitions. Um, and Mr. Bossy, thank you for stalling just long enough for me to do that. Uh, a mixed retirement development, as Mr. Bossy indicated, is a defined use in Prince George's County. And it's defined as a residential community for retirement aged persons developed under a uniform scheme of development containing a mix of attached, detached, or multifamily dwelling units, nursing or care homes or assisted living facilities. Each community shall be developed with not less than two types of dwelling units. Um, although this, this particular project doesn't propose nursing or care homes, we are proposing uh, two types of dwelling units for retirement aged persons. Um, so this will be an age restricted portion of the village of the Timothy Branch project. Um, as an age restricted development, one of your questions dealt with schools, um, it, would, it will be exempt uh, from the school facility surcharge fee because of the age restrictedness of the retirement age, obviously uh, will not be school age kids. There will be covenants that will be recorded and required to be recorded uh, to impose those restrictions on this portion of the property. Um, I hope that answers your question. Thank you. And in brief, Mr. Bossy did a fantastic job of summarizing the application. Uh, the request before you, the staff report, is extremely well written, as is uh, accustomed to working with Mr. Bossy. And I want to thank him and staff, uh, as well as your legal staff, for their assistance and transportation planning staff for their assistance in getting these revised conditions and findings uh, put forward and finalized for today's hearing. Um, this project uh, is the culmination of a basic plan amendment that you all recommended approval of on June 10th, and the ZAG, the Zoning Hearing Center, recommended approval of in the fall, and then the District Council approved on November 9th. Um, that basic plan amendment sought to remove the previously approved vis-a-vis -vis the basic plan and the comprehensive design plan, original comprehensive design plan, approximately 305,000 square feet of non-residential development on the LAC portion. So um, again, this, this CDP amendment is the next step in the iteration of revising that basic plan amendment to remove the non-residential development that was previously approved some 10 years ago that is just no longer viable. This does present an opportunity for this development to um, allow, and this was discussed last week during a couple of our hearings um, with the board, uh, kind of aging in place and the importance of providing those types of communities in a much larger comprehensive design community as the Timothy Branch Project. So we are extremely excited at the opportunity. Uh, NBR will be the, the builder. You'll be seeing those plans through a, a specific design plan amendment in the relatively near future, as well as a new preliminary plan for this LAC portion to accommodate and create the proposed uh, mixed retirement development lots for the single family detached and single family uh, attached, which are the duplex units. Uh, very comparable, similar in nature to the units that have been previously approved throughout the community, but again, for the age restricted. The other point I just want to highlight for this CDP amendment, and then I'll, I'll conclude, is that in addition to removing the non-residential development components, it also seeks to modify the recreational components by, by um, providing a community building for the MRD portion, for the mixed retirement development portion, 
as well as, as Mr. Bossy indicated, a dog park, bocce ball, and pickleball, which we are seeing be, uh, become more popular, the pickleball uh, gazebo sitting areas, and then, of course, the master plan trail, uh, and we're providing fitness stations along portions of that trail for the community. Um, with that, Madam Chair, we do have, although it probably looks like a lot of changes, a lot of a lot of those changes, if not all of these changes, are clarifying in nature. The original CDP was approved back in 2010. Um, obviously, a lot has changed since then, so many of these revisions are clarification. Uh, a lot of things have come into greater focus uh, with, with the passage of time and with the development of the Timothy Branch project. And so um, these conditions and modifications, again, that I would just, again, thank Mr. Bossy, Ms. Kozak, um, Mr. Uh, Barnett Woods, and uh, uh, Mr. Warner for their help and assistance uh, in reviewing. Oh, I should also mention um, uh, Ms. Hancock as well as for their review and finalizing these conditions. Um, as Mr. Bossy indicated, staff is in agreement with everything in the applicant's exhibit one, with the exception of one clause of condition 30, which we had requested in the insertion of the term Brandywine Road Club. Staff has requested that that term be deleted and then everything else that's depicted on exhibit one uh, be carried, uh, be, be adopted. In other words, everything in red that's stri stricken through is, an, is agreeable. The underlined Brandywine Road Club, they've asked for that to be deleted and the applicant is in agreement with that. So, is in agreement. Yeah, we are in agreement. Okay. So with the removal of the term Brandywine Road Club um, from an applicant's exhibit one, everything else um, is what we would ask be carried forward with Thank respect to what's depicted therein. Thank you. And we all have a copy of that with, in, in detail, so um, we don't need to go through everything uh, at this point. Um, and let me, make sure, let me make sure you're finished first, or you may not be. The, the only other thing I just wanted to highlight was we did provide and had, um, uh, it's, if we can have it marked as Exhibit 2, I, I propose, uh, which is the rendered yes. uh, three-dimensional yeah. streetscapes. And, and those streetscapes, I can go through those. But that's basically, you know, the views of Battle Woman Drive looking north and south, uh, looking into what will be the um, LAC portion, which are the, the mixed retirement portion of the development. As you can see, you know, berming and landscaping um, is, is probably – the most significant uh, aspect of some of these slides, but we, we did want to show you all because okay, we have CDP, it, but you said it's three dimensional. So, are you? Yeah. So they speak for themselves, and we just we thought that that was good for you all to see in anticipation of the upcoming SDP. And then the last exhibit was, uh, I guess, would be exhibit three, which is a letter. Mr. Mitchell's on the line, and he can speak. For I'm, himself, I actually am going to call that proponents exhibit number one. Very good. Okay. Proponents Exhibit 1, which was a letter dated June of 2020. Um, that was a letter. The regarding line is the basic plan amendment, but Mr. Mitchell um, did indicate support of the North Key, Brandywine North Key Civic Association, not just for the basic plan amendment, but as it says in the second line, including modifications to the basic plan, CDP, and preliminary plan. So we just felt that that was necessary to include that in the record. And Mr. Mitchell is here, and he can speak more to that. But with that, Madam Chair, we thank you so much for the board's continued support of this very significant, important project um, in the southern portion of the county. And again, thanks staff for its review and recommendations. And with the applicant's exhibit one as modified with that one minor deletion of the term Brandywine Road Club, we would respectfully request your approval. Okay. And, and now I'm done. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Tedesco. Um, thank let's, you. Okay. So, so let's see, there we go. So let's see um, if the board or Mr. Brown have any questions of you at this time. Madam Vice Chair. No questions, thank you. Commissioner Washington. No questions. Commissioner Dorner. No questions except um, on, on the age restriction, is it gonna be like 62, 65, or is it gonna be like lower 50 um, to not kind of discriminate against early retirees? Do you, do you know? It doesn't it say 55 or something? It's 55, I think. I'll check with counsel or someone. Yeah, 55 and over. Yeah. 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 Just saying. Uh, that was Mr. For the record, that was Mr. Gardner who answered that. But yeah, he beat me to the punch. It would be 55 and over. Thank you. Yeah. Look, Thank and, you. And I remember too because I have to keep an eye on these things. Okay. 
keep my options open. Um, sure. Okay. Um, so, anything else, Commissioner Dorner? Okay, Commissioner Geraldo? Mm -hmm. No questions, Madam Chair. I had the same question with respect to the age. Thank okay. you. Okay, we qualify. Okay. Uh, Mr. Brown? No. Nah. Uh, no questions. Thank you. And you do too. Okay. Uh, well above it. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So if there are no other questions. Um, let me see. I, I don't think we had anyone else that um, really wanted to speak because all of the folks on your team, Mr. Tedesco, are here if there's any questions. Mr. Mitchell, did you wish to speak? I, I believe he's caller four and might be yes. muted. Yes. We're getting to him. Uh, Mr. Mitchell, do you wish to speak? Yes, I do. You will then. You, you are more than welcome. Okay. Good morning, Madam Chair and other uh, commission members, and Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. Uh, a name, of course, is Earl Mitchell, president of the Brandywine North Keys Civic Association. During the past years, the Brandywine North Keys Civic Association has provided testimony to support the Timothy Branch Development Project, including changes to the initial plan. The association has done so primarily as a result of a commitment made by Mr. Gardner, as desired by the community, to construct a spine road on the property to provide an alternate and safer way for Brandywine residents to access the Brandywine Crossing Shopping Center without having to cross over two lanes of traffic when traveling on the busy and often congested Maryland 301 Crane Highway. This is a particular concern regarding the safety of the senior members of our community and association and is relevant to the purpose defined in our organization's charter. The association is aware that full completion of the development of Timothy Branch was planned to be accomplished in phases, with each phase being unique in the type of housing constructed. The association is appreciative of Mr. Gardner's consistent efforts to keep the organization informed on the status of any proposed changes to the development plan and to solicit our feedback. We do not foresee, the association does not foresee or believe there will be any negative impact on the safety, health, or general welfare of residents in the Brandywine community resulting from CDP 0901. Therefore, the association supports approval of this particular uh, CDP. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Um, uh, let's see if there are any questions of you, Madam Vice Chair. No questions. Commissioner Washington. No questions. Commissioner Dorner. No questions. Commissioner Geraldo. No questions. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Okay, Mr. Hunt. I mean, not Mr. Hunt. Um, so, uh, Mr. Brown. No questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so again, let me double check with Mr. Tedesco. Everyone else who I called today is part of your team, correct? Yes, ma'am. And uh, no burning desire to speak on the part of anyone, right? Uh, they were here just in as backup if there were specific questions that needed to be answered, and, and so no, they okay. don't need to speak. Um, okay. Okay. We thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Bossy, anything else to add? No, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Um, is, um, if there's nothing else to add, then um, is there a motion? Madam Chair, I move that we adopt the findings of staff in addition to the revised uh, findings as outlined in applicant exhibit number one and approve CDP dash zero nine zero one dash zero one and tcp one dash one five one dash nine zero dash zero three 
along with the associated conditions as outlined in staff's report and is further amended by applicant exhibit number one with the exception of condition number 30 uh, would ask that in the second line uh, the language Brandywine Road Club be deleted. All else stays the same as outlined in applicant exhibit number one. Okay. Second. We have a motion and it was a second by was that Commissioner Dorner? No, but I was Mr. Oh, oh, okay. He, and he got it in on time. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, com motion by Commissioner Washington, seconded by Commissioner Geraldo. Um, Commissioner Washington, I mean, com Madam Vice Chair. Aye. Okay, Commissioner Washington, aye. Madam Vice Chair? Well, aye. Um, oh, Commissioner Dorner? Vote aye. Commissioner Geraldo? Vote aye. The ayes have it 5 0. So um, the next item that I had originally planned to take would have been item 11, which is the Prince George's County Men's Facility. Of course, we're not taking that I, I case until 11 o'clock because that's when we have asked for a, a sign interpreter to come on at 11 o'clock so that um, we can then do that hearing. I know. So that we can then do that hearing um, at, at 11 o'clock. So since we have a, a moment or two, so let's take item uh, can we uh, go to item five, which is the mandatory referral one nine two three, um, F um, the Wamada Greenbelt. Good morning, Madam Chair. Okay, let me just make sure we have everyone first. Okay, so um, it's well actually okay. oh, we have Miss Thompson. You're present. Um, Ken Paget. Okay, and Lynn Brooks. Lynn Brooks. Un unmute the phones. Lynn Brooks, are you on? Okay, thank yes, you. Yes, I am. Okay, fine. Okay, good. Ms. Thompson, you're on. Thompson? Are you ready for me? Yes, I said you're on. Okay. Someone had muted me. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Oh, before I begin, I too want to say happy birthday to Miss Jessica Jones. <laughs> so MR nineteen three Wamada Tower, Greenbelt Tower. This proposal was reviewed per land use article section 20-301 through 305 of Maryland Annotated Code for Mandatory Referrals. This is for the construction of a 200-foot tower with four 17-foot antennas, a 12-foot by 34-foot communication shelter with enclosed backup generator, and a 1,000-pound LPG gas tank to support a new 700 megahertz radio system. Next slide, please. This project is located in Council District 1. Next slide, please. The site is a 64.92 acre site and it's addressed as 5701 Sunnyside Avenue, located in Beltsville. It's located on the south side of Sunnyside Avenue, approximately 1,160 feet to the west of the intersection of Edmonston Road and Sunnyside Avenue. Next slide, please. The site is zoned open space and is surrounded by other properties in the reserved open space zone. Next slide, please. The site is east of, what? I'm sorry, the site is west of Edmonston Road and access directly from Sunnyside Avenue. Next slide, please. There are no significant environmental features. Next slide, please. The aerial view shows that there's a maintained lawn, gravel parking lot, and a landscape wooded vegetation on the site. Next slide, please. The existing condition site plan shows that the property contains buildings of various sizes and shapes with interior railways, the metro rail line, and parking areas and woodlands. Next slide, please. 
The site plan shows the location of the tower, which is at the upper top corner of the, of the upper right side corner of the slide. Um, the communication shelter generation, generator and gas tanks. Next slide, please. There are two recommendations. One is to um, adhere to the state of Maryland regulations regarding pollution and noise. And the second one is just to add a note to the plan, noting that properties in the OS zone are exempt from tree canopy coverage requirements. And um, this application has been reviewed for conformance with the planning board's adopt the uniform standards for mandatory referral review as set forth in the technical staff report. And staff recommends that the planning board adopt the staff comments and transmit them to the applicant. And that concludes staff presentation. Okay, thank you, Ms. Thompson. Let's see if there are any questions of you at this time. Madam Vice Chair. At this time, thank you, Commissioner Washington. No questions, Commissioner Dorner. No questions, Commissioner Geraldo. No questions, thank you, um, Mr. Paget. Is there anything you wish to add at this time? Uh, no, we have no further uh comments to add to the presentation that was presented by Ms. Thompson. We appreciate uh staff support. In that. Thank you, um. Uh, Ms. Brooks, do you have anything to add? <coughs> Ms. Brooks? I don't have anything to add. Okay, thank you. Is there a motion? Madam Chair, I move that we uh, accept the recommendations of staff and approve transmittal of MR-1923F to Mr. Ken Paget. Um, HICAPS Incorporated. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Washington, seconded by Vice Chair Bailey. Uh, Madam Vice Chair? Aye. Um, um, Commissioner uh, Washington? Aye. Um, Commissioner Geraldo? Aye. Commissioner Dorner? Aye. The ayes have it 5-0. Ms. Thompson, <laughs> while you are on, let's go. You got one more, item six, before, before we get to our 11 o'clock matter. Okay. Again, um, this is mandatory referral MR-1924F, Wamada Branch Avenue Tower. This proposal was reviewed per land use article section 20-301 through 305 of the Maryland Annotated Code for mandatory referrals. This is for the construction of a 200 foot tower with four 17 foot antennas, a 12 foot by 34 foot communication shelter with enclosed backup generator and a 1000 pound LPG gas tank to support a new 700 megahertz radio system. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay, I'm going to continue. Okay. The project is located What's, in Council What, what number slide do you want? The site. Um, next slide. Go to Three. slide. Four. Okay, go ahead. Next slide. The segment. Okay. The, the, the site is a 33.18 acre parcel and is located on the east side of Alfway, just south of Alfway in Midtown, the intersection of Alfway and Midtown Square. I'm on the master plan right of way slide. The largest light site is located on the south east side of Capitol Gateway Drive with a physical address of zero Alfway. There are no significant environmental features. The site is within the light industrial and military installation overlay zones. The site is bounded to the north, south, and east by residentially zoned properties. The properties to the west are in the mixed use transportation oriented zone. The development, the site is also located in the development district overlay zone of the 2014 approved Southern Green Line station area sector plan and sectional map amendment. The aerial view of this site contains 
shows that the site contains buildings of various sizes and shapes with interior roadways, metro rail lines, parking areas, and woodland areas. The site plan shows the orient orientation and location of the tower, the communication shelter, the generator, and the gas tanks. Slide 10 is the tower, shows the tower detail. And slide 11, if you would just go to that, please. Slide 11, there are three recommendations. I'll point um, to recommendation number two, where um, we are asking the applicant to provide more screening for the ground structures on the south and west sides of the property and add additional plantings. And with that, the application has been reviewed for conformance to the planning boards adopt the uniform standards for mandatory referral review as set forth in the technical staff report. And staff recommends that the planning board adopt the staff comments and transmit them to the applicant. And that concludes staff presentation. Thank you. Okay, are there any, thank you, Ms. Thompson. Are there any questions, Madam Vice Chair? No questions, thank you. Um, Commissioner Washington. No questions, thank you. Commissioner Dorner. No questions, thank you. Okay, and Commissioner Giraldo. No questions, Madam Chair, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Padgett, any comments? Uh, no, not at this time. I'd just like to thank this board for the opportunity to have this presented and Ms. Thompson for preparing the presentation and presenting it to the board this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brooks. Any comment? Nothing to add, thank you. Thank you. Lester Butler. Nothing to add, thank you. Thank you. Um, that concludes my list of speakers. Is there a motion? Madam Chair, I move that we accept uh, the recommendations of staff and approve the transmittal of MR-1924F to Mr. Ken Padgett at HICAPS Incorporated. We have a motion, motion by Commissioner Washington, seconded by um, Madam Vice Chair. Um, Madam Vice Chair? Vote aye. Commissioner Washington? Aye. Commissioner Dorner? Vote aye. The ayes have, uh, uh, Commissioner Geraldo? Thank you. Okay, the ayes have it 5-0. Okay, so um, motion carries 5-0. All right, so we, it is just about, a, is it 11 o'clock straight up, just about? Yes. It is. Okay, wonderful, perfect timing. So with that, we can go ahead and take item 11. And item 11, we do have a request for a continuance on behalf of the citizens, and I do want to make sure that um, we have a number of people signed up. I'm going to go through all the names and um, just to, to see who signed up and to see um, hopefully everyone is in agreement with the continuous request. Um, but if not, it's up to the board anyway. Um, so um, I ha this is probably gonna, the part that's going to take the longest. Um, Bobby Ray, are you on? Yes, Madam Chair, I'm present. Okay. And so um, um, Joseph Reddy, are you on? Mr. Reddy, we see you unmuted from our end. Are you unmuted from your end? Okay, we we uh, I can barely hear you. I did hear you say you're on, so if you can, um, just try to adjust your sound. Okay, um, but I'm going to continue to call all the names to make sure I've reached everyone. Um, uh, Jared McCarthy, are you on? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Good morning, morning, Madam Chairman. Good morning. It's good to hear your voice. Um, Gloria uh, Brown Burnett, are you on? And and everyone else, and and everyone else, can, let me just do this. If everyone else um, can just um, turn off their cameras be, so that the interpreter can be seen, that would be very very helpful. Um, um, and and I. I will come back to you, Bobby Ray, as needed, and, and also to you, Mr. Ruddy, as needed. 
Um, so Gloria Brown Burnett, are you on? And it's not necessary if if if, if um, the Mr. Ruddy and Mr. McCarthy have it. Samuel Williams. I think you need to unmute everyone, just so we can hear. Samuel Williams. Brene Pope. Um, Macy Roberts. Jonathan Butler. Can you see the names? No butler. Okay. Um, Jeffrey Bingham. Yes, Madam Chair. I'm on. Wonderful. Okay. Jose Hunter. John Oates. Present. Okay. Um, Daisy Napier. Or, or Napier. Sharon Coker. Yvette Lee. Chris Robinson. I'm going to continue to call names. Just say present or here if you if if you hear your name. Mark Falzone. I'm here. Uh, thank I'm right you. here. And thank, I, thank you. I'm sort of uh, representing one Addison United. Okay, Steve Stetzer. And then and Donna Turner. Or oh, you got that covered, Mr. Falzone. Okay. Ronald Klein. Peggy Boozer, Sharon Turner, present. Okay. Um, Tamer Mahmood, Munia Denard, Crystal Delby, Kelly Collins. Tatiana Mallory, Mallory, Tayaka Mallory, Donna Turner, Regina Bryan, Scott Wheeler, Daisy Maggot, um, L. Langevin, Angel Anderson, Michael Springer, Michaela Mays, Macy Nelson, um, Ruth Grover, Jeremy Speaks, Cortez Scott, Wanda Collins, Kevin Francis, Adele Peters, Joanne Harrison, Arian Cannon. Here. Oh, Joanne Harrison, that's you? Okay. Arian Cannon, Lonnie Monroe. Vincent Monroe, Preston Smith, Denise Alfaro, Jalisa Cantave, Reynolds Cantave, or it's Cantave, I'm not sure. Michelle Esterlin, Jade Sims, Deborah Cameron, Nicole Ford, William Lane, Muriel Cooper, Excuse me? William What do you say? I think William Lane. Oh, William Lane, is that you? You're here? Yes, I'm here. Can okay. you hear me? Yes, thank you. Um, Muriel Cooper. Desiree Smith. Lamont Brown. Nevada Basteo. Okay. Michelle Brown, Vaughn Edmead, Robin Hamilton, Alex Talleyrand. Present, present. Oh, Robin, Robin Hamilton is present. This is Robin Hamilton. Thank you. Alex Talleyrand. Um, Sean Ferguson. Uh, Regina Bryan. Jessica Grochenhuis, Bradley Hurd. Present. Okay. Jean Paul Petit. Um, Roland Sharp. 
Belinda Queen, Dahlia Shaywitz. Okay, that concludes my sign-up list for persons. We do have additional exhibits and whatnot, but I'm going to turn it over to Bobby Ray because we do... I'm sorry, did you call Nicholas Dell? I didn't hear that. Let me see, where is that? Right under Vaughn. Can you... My, Right under where? Right under Vaughn, about halfway down. Ed Mead, Nicholas. I, yeah, yeah, Did I you called call him. him? I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. So that concludes my sign up list. I'm now going to turn it over to Bobby Ray because we do have a request for a continuance um, from the county, Prince George's County. To um, in order to give the county time to have um, conversations um, or with um, the community at large, Mr. Ray. Yeah, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, members of the Planning Board. Uh, for the record, record, I'm uh, Bobby Ray with the Special Projects Section. Um, this item is a mandatory referral review for the proposed replacement of an existing transitional housing facility which is located at 603 South Addis Road. Excuse me, excuse me, uh, Mr. Mr. Ray, excuse yeah, okay. me, Mr. Ray, Mr. Ray. Yes. I have a lot of nerve asking this because the native New Yorker in me talks quickly, talks fast, but I'm going to ask that you slow down a little bit just to give the sign interpreter um, the opportunity to keep up with us. Okay. Okay. Thank I, you. I can do that. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, this item is a mandatory referral review. Uh, it's for the proposed replacement of an existing transitional housing facility uh, located at 603 South Addison Road. Uh, the applicant, as indicated, uh, is the County Office of Central Services. Uh, on December 10th, 2020, the board conducted a public meeting regarding the proposal and uh, extensive public testimony was received at that meeting. Uh, Following the receipt of public comment, the board voted to continue the item to the meeting of January 14th, 2021 to allow for additional public testimony. On January 6th, the planning department received a written request from the applicant uh, that the item be continued to the meeting of January 28th, 2021, or to a later uh, agreed upon meeting. Uh, the board, uh, planning board did receive a request from Mark Falzone, who is representing One Addison United, uh, and their request was that the, the item be continued to a meeting date in February to allow additional time. Uh, the purpose of the request uh, from, from the county uh, was to allow more time for interaction uh, and conversation between the county and the community stakeholders. Uh, staff did send an email notification to all of the registered speakers who signed up for the December 10th, 2020 meeting. Uh, informing, me, uh, informing them of the uh, request of continuation. In response, we received two acknowledgments of receipt, uh, but there was no indication from anyone whether they support or oppose the uh, uh, continuation. And we do plan on providing, should, should the board agree to a continuation, we do plan on providing notification uh, to abutting property owners, to registered associations, and to, again, to the um, registered speakers from December 10th. Uh, and uh, I believe the county does have representatives uh, available to speak uh, to the request. And with that, um, that concludes my initial presentation. Thank you so much, Mr. Ray. I do have one question for you. Um, it seems like we have yes. two um, requests for continuances. Obviously, Mr. M uh, Macy Nelson asked for this continuance, um, and we picked this day. The county has asked for a continuance to January 28th, or a later date. Um, Mr. Falzone has asked for a continuance. Did his request overlap with the counties or which came first? I can, I can have him speak. I think the only issue is what day what are we going to continue this to? So, um, well, I believe Ms. Mr. Falzone's request just came in. It was in the additional backup materials. Yes, yes. Um, for today's meeting, so I think his was the last received. Yes, but I was, was just wondering, and, and I can ask him. I can ask him when we get to him um, about um, okay. his, his date. Um, okay, I'm, I'm not with you yet, though, Mr. Falzone. So, so hold tight. Okay, um, I'm now going to turn to uh, Mr. Ruddy. 
again, good morning, Madam Chair. Good and morning. Planning board. I, can you hear me? We can hear you. We can hear you much better now. Thank you. If at any time I start talking too fast, please let me know. Okay. Yeah. I think you're doing I great. I think. I think we'll get the yeah. signal if if we're too fast, and which I know I was terribly guilty of. Okay, Mr. Reddy, go ahead. Thank you. Mr. Ray has correctly provided the background uh, on or about January 6th, the county, in an effort to uh, have additional conversation, requested a continuance of the hearing uh, today so that there would be adequate time to have those additional conversations with the community members prior to the next hearing. Unfortunately, just due to scheduling, it was unable to be accomplished before today's hearing. So the county has asked for a brief continuance to the 28th of January, because during that time, it will have time to be able to speak with the community members and also discuss those concerns that were brought to the planning board the last time this matter was before the board on December the 10th. So it's for those reasons that the county requests a brief delay to the 28th of January so that the, the officials with the county can meet with the community about the concerns they previously raised. I'm available if you have any additional questions. I know there are two other continuances. Thank you for your time. Um, okay, thank you, Mr. Ruddy. Um, I am now going to turn to, um, I, I don't think, I, I know, um, Mr. Nelson asked for a continuance as well, but I didn't. He didn't respond when I called his name. Uh, Mr. Ruddy, do you have any idea when these conversations are, are will take place yet with the county? Do you have anything scheduled yet? Do you know? I believe. I believe there are. It is on the schedule for today. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I believe. That, and Madam Chair, one additional request. Uh, I would like to just, for the record, ask that if there is a continuance, that notices do get sent. Um, I know that's not always done, but I would ask that's done, and I appreciate Mr. Ray mentioning that in his, uh, in, in his remarks. Well, normally, I, I can't guarantee that we will, we can try and we can post it uh, on our, um, but we, we, when a continuance to a specific date is granted publicly, then it's not, it's not normally sent out. Um, no, we, um, we can see, um, but um, but we, we have ways of, of, of reaching at least the people who have signed up on this case. Um, I, I can't commit to that, but we can make we can make an effort. It's it's definitely not a requirement, a, a legal requirement, but we can see what we can do there. Um, so now I'm going to turn to um, I know there so many some people are on right now, and some people are meeting with the county executive, and I think they may be meeting now. Um, and Mr. Ruddy, one more thing. If they're meeting with the county now, um, do you think the county will, and I guess they're meeting with the county executive or whomever, do you think they will have, um, if there are any concessions or anything, um, do you think that, that it will be resolved in time for the 28th? I do, but okay. at the same time, if the, if the, if Madam Chair thought that additional time was necessary into a date in February, you know, obviously that's you know a, another consideration uh, for the planning board to decide okay. if they wanted a little additional buffer, so there wouldn't need to be another request for a continuance prior to the third year. Okay. Well, I have been checking with our our folks here, and the issue is. Um, I think it would, be, if we did move it to February, it would be a couple of weeks into February. It wouldn't be the very end of February, but it would be mid-February because I also have to look at what's already scheduled on the agenda and um, so that it's not too overwhelming. But we do have a spot mid-February mid if needed. Um, and if that um, is not offensive um, to the county as well. I, I think, I, I'm glad that they're meeting today, but sometimes after the meeting, there is some give and take. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that you all have enough time for um, any kind of follow-up. Um, that is definitely a consideration. Okay. All right. With that, I'm going to... Uh, all right. Thank you. Um, 
I'm going to turn to, um, I think, let's turn to Mr. Falzone who asked for the continuance as well. Mr. Falzone. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. I really appreciate this. And uh, I appreciate, first of all, that, uh, you know, you and the board saw the wisdom to continue this uh, to January to allow uh, uh, both parties to, uh, to have the space to meet and talk and dialogue. And um, that meeting uh, today that was referenced uh, is going to be this afternoon. So it's not happening at this moment. But um, we really do appreciate, um, you know, the planning board giving us the space to do this. I also want to thank Mr. Rudd and uh and the um uh entire um uh county uh administration for supporting a uh, continuance as well and giving the space to talk as uh, as mr ruddy mentioned uh the holidays uh didn't allow the county uh time to uh meet with us we did request meetings all the way pretty much immediately after um the the planning board meeting but we appreciate uh mr ruddy and uh and the county uh, administration's uh, agree, agreeing that this should be continued. We would prefer that this, uh, um, in, you actually already made my point, Madam Chair, which is I do think that there might be things that happen after today's meeting. There might even be additional meetings. Um, and so we would ask that this uh, go to February. Specifically, I would propose February 18th. That gives us a month um, to really, um, you know, hopefully have a robust discussion and, um, uh, and allow, um, uh, uh, any any work that may come off of said meetings to take place before it comes uh, back before uh, the, uh, uh, the the planning board. So that would be my request, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. um, uh, with that said, I really do want to again express my appreciation to Mr. Ruddy and County Administration and County Executive Also Brooks. Mm -hmm. I want to commend her for 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 being so um, uh, uh, for facilitating a lot of these this stuff. So thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, thank you, Mr. Falzone. I'm going to go back to Mr. Ruddy for a second. Mr. Ruddy, um, you've heard the yes, request for the, the 18th. The, as fate would have it, that is the day, um, that is the only day in February where we have an extra opening for something of this magnitude. Um, so I don't know, you know, I know you've asked for the 28th, but my experience tells me that sometimes after these meetings that, that there are um, some, um, there's some additional give and take or people go back to the drawing board on both sides. I don't know, I know your preference is for the 28th and that may be accommodated. Um, on, on the other hand, the, the February 18th may allow for um, additional give and take. And I, I would like to hear the county's position on that. And, uh, and maybe you can answer Mr. Reddy or, um, or the Honorable uh, Mr. Uh, uh, McCarthy, Jared McCarthy can respond as well. We, we have no objection to the 18th of February. If that's, uh, if the Madam Chair believes that's the best path forward based on her experience. Okay. Based on my experience, because some things happen after the things happen after the initial meeting, because people go back to the drawing board and try to make some concessions. Typically, that's in in, in nearly every case of this nature. So, um, I think that gives you some time, if if, if you're all okay with that, uh, Mr. McCarthy. Do you, is there anything you care to add? No, ma'am. We are absolutely fine with the 18th. That is acceptable to the county, and as you indicated, it gives us some space to work. So we appreciate your forethought on that, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Okay, so right now what we have is um, a proposal on the table, I guess, for, for February 18th. I do want to now, the people who were here, who were signed up, I'm going to ask them only if they agree with the continuance at this point. So, um, Jeffrey Bingham, you're on. You're okay? with February 18th? Absolutely. Good morning, uh, uh, board. Um, thank you for having me. And yes, I'm absolutely okay with the 18th. Okay, thank you. John Oates? Good morning. Thank you for, for having me also. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you perfectly. Uh, February 18th is okay for me right now. Thank you. Sharon Turner? Oh. Karen Turner? Uh, 
Yes. Okay. Are you okay with the continuance to February 18th? Absolutely, yes. Wonderful. Thank you. Joanne Harrison? Absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, William Lane? Yes. You're good with the February 18th? Yes, I am. Thank you. Robin Hamilton? Yes. Yes, I am. I'm fine with that. Wonderful. Thank you. Bradley Hurd? Good morning, Madam Chair. Uh, yes, I am uh, fine with the continuous. Thank you. To February 18th. Okay. That concluded yes, the folks that I had who had actually responded. So, um, does, let me see if the board has any questions of anyone at this time, and then I'm going to call for a motion. If, Madam Vice Chair, do you have any questions of anyone? No questions at this time. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Washington? No questions. Thank you. Commissioner Dorner? No questions. Thank you. Commissioner Geraldo? The question is just thankful for the collaboration. Yes. Um, is there a motion? Madam Chair, it's Commissioner Washington. Uh, I move that we approve the request for continuance and uh, schedule the application for um, planning board planning board meeting date of February 18, 2021. Thank you. We have a Second. motion. Seconded by Commissioner Geraldo. Um, under discussion, I would like to say, I'd like to thank everyone for making, I'm so glad we continued the matter. Um, hopefully the time is very, proves to be very productive. Um, this is opportunity knocking um, for greater collaboration and communication. Um, so I think that part is wonderful. I would also suggest that um, we will look at our agenda and see if we can set this in or hold harmless until a specific time so that you don't have to wait um, indefinitely when we start. So, uh, but we have to look at our agenda for that and, and we'll get notice the, the time um, to you and they'll be posted as well, okay? Um, but thank you everyone. I'm gonna call for the um, vote. Um, Madam Vice Chair? Vote aye. Commissioner Washington? Vote aye. Commissioner Dorner? Vote aye. Commissioner Geraldo? Vote aye. The ayes have it 5-0. This matter will be continued until February 18th and we will look to um, set it in for a specific time or at least a hold harmless time, which means hold harmless means, for instance, if we hold harmless until one o'clock, it means the case will not be heard before one o'clock. It may not be heard exactly at one o'clock, but not, but hold harmless means it will not be heard in, before one o'clock. So we will do the best we can to gauge an approximate time for you. Um, thank you, everyone. And at this time, I think we'll take a, um, a health break, a, a five to 10 minute health break. As a matter of fact, let's come back at 11.35. And then we will, when we come back at 11.35, we will start with item um, seven, and then eight, nine, and three A. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, the Prince George's County Planning Board is back in session after a short recess. Um, the next items on our agenda, we're going to proceed in this order, are item seven, item eight, item nine, and item three A. Um, item seven is a reconsideration of um, preliminary plan of subdivision um, 4-14008 Skyline um, subdivision. Now, let's see. Let me make sure we have everyone um, that we need. Ms. Gupta. Yes, Madam Chair. Present. Wonderful. Mr. Rivera. I see hey, you. I'm here. Wonderful. Um, Chinme Vias. I don't think he's on the call, although he's meeting. He's muted. He, okay, there he is. Okay. <laughs> Oh, there he is. Thank you. Good morning. I'm here, but I'm just here to support. I don't have to speak. Okay, wonderful. And Sylvia Silverman? 
Yes, Madam Chair, I'm here, ready for any questions. Okay, thank you. And Dennis Danner. He's definitely not here. Okay, not there. Okay, and that concludes my sign-up list. Ms. Gupta, you are on. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. For the record, I am Ridhila Gupta, Planner Coordinator with the Subdivision Section. Item number seven on the agenda is a reconsideration hearing of the merits of Skyline Subdivision 4-14008. Specifically, the request is for reconsideration of condition nine of PGCPB resolution number 15-111, which pertains to denial of access to Sutran Road. Next slide, please. The site is located in the central part of Prince George's County within planning area 76A and Council District 9. Next slide, please. More specifically, the site is located in southwest called Quadrant of the intersection of Randolph Road and Suitland Road. Next slide, please. The subject site is located in the one family detached residential, that is the R80 zone. The site has R80 zone properties to the south and west, CSC to the north beyond Randolph Road, and R55 to the east beyond Suitland Road. Next slide, please. The subject site is also located in the development district overlay, the DDO zone. Next slide, please. The aerial photograph shows that the 2.48 acre property is yet undeveloped and also shows the surrounding properties and roadways. The property to the north beyond Randolph Road is occupied by a church, and the property to the south is occupied by a veterans organization. Other properties in the immediate vicinity are developed with single family detached residences. Next slide, please. The site map shows the topography on the site, which is essentially flat. Next slide, please. The master plan right of way map shows the arterial Suitland Road, shown here in red, abutting the property to the northeast. Next slide, please. The preliminary plan of subdivision 4-14008 was approved for seven single family lots and a variation to section 24-121A3 to allow one direct access for lots one to seven onto the arterial route and road. Next slide, please. The subdivision as approved was designed to have access to a shared driveway that is covered by an easement and which acts as an access road along the entire frontage of the property. In accordance with the landscape manual, a type C buffer is required between the Veterans Private Club and Lot 7, which consists of a 30-foot wide minimum landscape yard seen in the slide to the right. Next slide, please. This bird's eye view shows the currently undeveloped property and its surroundings. Next slide, please. This slide exhibits the preliminary plan of subdivision as approved by PGCPB resolution number 15-111 and adopted by the planning board on October 29, 2015. Next slide, please. The Type 1 Tree Conservation Plan, TCP 1-002-15, was also approved with the PPS and shows the approved seven lot layout with the required woodland conservation to be met with offsite woodland credits. Next slide, please. 
The applicant is requesting that condition nine of the PGCPB resolution number 15-111 and the approved PBS be reconsidered to allow three shared driveways to Suflin Road to serve six lots instead of one shared driveway serving seven lots. Part of this reconsideration would amend the findings for the variation from section 24-12183 to allow for three shared driveways to Suflin Road instead of one. Next slide, please. This slide exhibits the revised preliminary plan of subdivision as proposed by the applicant in support of the reconsideration request, showing six lots instead of seven as previously approved. Next slide, please. The TCP-1 was revised and submitted with this reconsideration request to account for the lot reduction and amended driveway access to Suplin Road. The woodland conservation requirement will still be met with the offside woodland credits. The applicant requested a reconsideration of condition nine of resolution of approval on the basis of other good cause in furtherance of substantial public interest. The applicant justifies that the Department of Permitting, Inspections and Enforcement, DPI, has approved a stower concept plan showing preference to access Sultan Road via three shared access driveways, which is a change from the recommendation put forth at the time the PPS was approved. Staff finds that the reconsideration request justified, justified and notes that the revised plan submitted by the applicant minimizes the number of access points on Suflin Road to three and eliminates one lot, which is an acceptable configuration. Motorists are used to encountering driveways on Suflin Road, given the existing single family detached homes in this area, which all directly access Suflin Road. Staff also finds that the proposal minimizes the necessary, necessary paving from the current approval, reduces the driveways needed by eliminating a lot, and maintains the character of the neighborhood. It is noted that in addition to consideration of condition nine specifically requested by the applicant, the reconsideration also affects conditions 10 and 14 approved by the planning board. Condition 10 provides vehicle trip generation from the development, and condition 14 addresses the proposed vehicular access easement. Staff also recommends two new conditions, that is condition 15 and 16 to be added to the resolution. Condition 15 requires certain revisions to be made to the TCP-1 before signature approval, and condition 16 requires a turnaround at each driveway to avoid the need for cars to back onto Sultan Road. Staff has also prepared the necessary amended findings in support of the reconsideration, which can be found in the staff report. The subdivision staff recommends that the planning board adopt the findings and approve the reconsideration of conditions 9, 10, 14, and the addition of conditions 15 and 16 wow. okay. for Skyline Subdivision 4-14008 with the amended findings as contained in the staff report. This concludes staff presentation. Thank you so much, Ms. Gupta. Um, and let's see if the board has any questions of you at this time. Madam Vice Chair. Questions at this time, thank you. Okay, Commissioner Washington. No questions. Um, Commissioner Dorner. No questions, thank you. Commissioner Geraldo. No, no questions, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Rivera. Good morning, Madam Chair, Good members morning. of the board. For the record, Norman Rivera. Uh, 
Ms. Gupta covered the staff report very well. It's only related to the one issue of having less access points to Suitland Road. So we have deleted one of the seven lots, and now there will be six lots with each of the two lots having an access point to Suitland Road. If you looked at their aerial photo a little bit ago, you could see that there are numerous homes on the other side of, there you go, Suitland Road. Each and every one of those houses and all the commercial properties all have direct access driveways to the road. So we're making it more efficient by having six lots with only three points. As Ms. Gupta said, DPI has already recommended approval of our concept plan. We work with the community as we did the first time around on the preliminary plan, and they are in support, and those letters are in the record. And this will allow us to go to the next step, which is the detailed site plan, where you would see it later with architecture and the implementation of the conditions of approval. So with that, we would accept the staff report and the findings as revised and look forward to any questions in moving forward with this project. Thank you, Mr. Rivera. Let's see if there's any questions of you. Madam Vice Chair? No questions. Commissioner Washington? No questions. Commissioner Dorner? No questions. Commissioner Geraldo? No questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. There are no questions. And everyone else who signed up was here to speak with you if there's any questions. So is there a motion on behalf of the Planning Board? Madam Chair, I move that we adopt the revised findings of staff and approve the reconsideration of preliminary plan 4-14008 to amend findings 2, 4, 6, 9, 18, and 20, in addition to conditions 2, 9, 10, 14, and new conditions 15 and 16 as outlined in the technical staff's report. Okay. We have a motion from Commissioner Washington seconded by Madam Vice Chair, obviously on the basis of good cause. Madam Vice Chair? Would I? Commissioner Washington? I. Commissioner Dorner? Would I? Commissioner Geraldo? Would I? Thank you. The ayes have it, 5-0. Thank you so much. And thank you, Ms. Gupta, too. Thank you very much. Okay. And thank you, Mr. Rivera. Great job on the 34th meeting. Excuse me? Great job on your 34th meeting. Oh, so far. We got a biggie now, though. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Goodbye now. So the next item on our agenda is item 8. Now, item 8, I'm going to have, item 8 is a remand of a specific design plan, SDP 1803, which is the 711 at Brandywine Village. It is a remand from the Prince George's County Council. I'm going to check to make sure we have everyone we need. Mr. Bossie? I am present, Madam Chairwoman. Thank you. Mr. Horn? I'm present, Madam Chair. Mr. Horn, while you're right there, is there anything you want to say to us about Roll Tide? Yes, I think I heard you this morning, Madam Chair. We say it very well. Thank you. Okay. Roll Tide. Mr. Caputo? Yes, I'm here. Mr. Speech? Present. Mr. Gansert? Ms., Ms., I'm sorry. Ms. Gansert? I don't know if she's going to be joining us. Okay. Well, did I pronounce it correctly? You did. Okay. Okay. Mr. Lenhart? Present. Okay. Thank you. Now we have, okay, so you're going to have to help me. Suhani Chitalia? Good morning. Present. Okay. Did I pronounce it correctly? You did. It was perfect. Thank you. Okay. Now I've got to remember how I pronounce it. Okay. Jacqueline Kapinos? Good morning. Present. Did I pronounce yours correctly? Yes, perfectly. Okay. Thank you. Jennifer Jackson? Okay. 
Um, Jamila. Present. Okay, wonderful. Jamila Balamani. Good morning, present. Wonderful. Okay, that concludes my sign-up speakers. We have um, a significant um, additional backup, um, so I will let um, um, I will let uh, Mr. Bossy um, before we take off. He'll I'll let him um, get started with that. So we're ready for you. Ready for takeoff, Mr. Loving, Bossy. Loving the pilot analogy. Thank you. Yes. Uh, happy to be back in front of the board again this morning, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, as you mentioned, this is item eight. This is the remand hearing of the specific design plan SDP-1803, uh, which does propose the development of a 7-Eleven brand uh, food and beverage store and a gas station. Uh, as you did point out, uh, we did receive a number of additional backup documents. Uh, these did include a single exhibit from the applicant and four exhibits submitted by uh, Ms. Chitalia with the University of Maryland Law Clinic uh, on behalf of the opponents here. Uh, these items were added to your backup, um, so those sh uh, you should have those available to review. We do. Uh, I do want to mention uh, here, too, uh, staff did also prepare just a short orientation. That's what uh, we presentation need. Thank you. Yeah, should should it be needed. Uh, so if you'd like me to go through that, just to remind the board of, I would of like what the that. project was. I would like sure. that. Okay. okay, then I'm going to ask if we can uh, jump right into that then. Um, uh, I, we can I, move I, on to... Are you going to do it or, or do you need Mr. Flanagan here to do it? And if so, you have to guide him. To... Uh, yes, yes. So if we want to go over the orientation information, I'm going to ask Mr. Flanagan to turn to slide three, please. Okay. All right. So um, the property that we are talking about, subject to the SDP, is in Planning Area 85A, Council District 9. Uh, this is back in the Brandywine area of Southern Prince George's County. Uh, slide four, please. Subject properties in the northwest quadrant of the intersection of US 301, Robert Crane Highway, and Chad's Ford Drive. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the site that we are talking about is in the local activity center zone. That's a comprehensive design zone. Slide six, please. Uh, the aerial image here does show the subject site uh, as undeveloped. However, uh, I will say the image is a little dated. The site has since been uh, graded, along with a uh, uh, basic infrastructure installation uh, is, is ongoing. Uh, the right-of-way of US 301 abuts the site to the east, again with Chadsford Drive to the south. Uh, there is a stream valley that includes environmental features in woodland. Uh, that is preserved, which is located between the subject site and the residential development to the west. Uh, slide seven, please. Uh, the site here does slope downwards from west. Can everyone else please west. mute? Can everyone else please mute? Thank you. Uh, so the, slight, uh, the site does have a, a little bit of a slope from uh, east to west that goes down gradient toward the stream valley. Uh, slide eight, please. Subject site uh, is loosely circled here in red and is shown in context with the site access road and commercial buildings that were approved by the board under SDP 1802. Uh, west of the site, uh, this is on the top part of the image, we do see some of the existing townhouse development uh, with the preserved area of woodlands and primary management area in between uh, the commercial and residential development. Uh, in this area, uh, the wooded area to be retained is approximately 200 feet wide. Uh, slide nine, please. So as shown here on the development uh, site development plan, uh, we do see the food and beverage store in the west central portion of the site and kind of the top central portion of the image. Uh, the gas station canopy below it with eight fuel dispensers uh, a little closer to, to US 301. Uh, we do see access is provided at two points, uh, the north and south end of the building respectively. The northern driveway shown here is to be shared with the abutting development to the north, uh, which is provided for under SDP 1802. That is a, um, a Taco Bell restaurant. Uh, parking for the site is shown here to the south and east of the building uh, with its trash enclosure and loading space provided just to the north of the building. Uh, sidewalks and bike racks are also provided. 
staff generally found that transportation and pedestrian site access issues and circulation were adequate. Kenny, if we could go back to slide two, please. I'd just like to bring that up. Thank you so much. So the district council, as we know, this is a remand hearing. The district council, in its order of remand, did ask the planning board to address the two specific issues that we see here. And those pertain to the applicability of sections 27528B and 27494 of the zoning ordinance. I do want to direct you to staff's memorandum, which is in your backup, that is dated December 31st. As provided in that memo, staff has found the provisions of the zone, these provisions of the zoning ordinance are not applicable for the approval of SDP 1803, as the ordinance required conformance be demonstrated with these requirements at the time of earlier approvals for the subject property. Section 27528B does pertain specifically to specific design plans for infrastructure. And SDP 1803 is not a specific design plan for infrastructure. The board did previously approve a specific design plan for infrastructure that is associated with the site. That was SDP 1604. And that is associated with the larger Brandywine Village commercial development, which the site is part of. Regarding section 27494, which is... Excuse me, Mr. Bossie. When we approved the infrastructure, but when was that? That wasn't the subject of the county council's action in this particular case, right? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. The order of remand asked the board to look at section 27528B, which has to do with the SDP for infrastructure. If you bear with me a moment, I can find the date of approval for that. That should be in our backup or in our memo. Looks like February 16, 2017. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Commissioner Washington, you beat me to it. Thank you. Trying to be helpful. Thank you so much. So that SDP, the infrastructure SDP, is not the subject of discussion here today, but that was where the relevant finding for section 27528B was made back in September of 2017. So the other second point of remand was regarding section 27494. Those were the purposes of the LAC zone and the associated compatibility findings. Those were actually determined at the time of basic plan approval, as noted in our memo. And at that time, the relationship of the uses, both the residential and the commercial, proposed for the overall Brandywine Village development and the development spaces that were set aside for those different uses were approved by the basic plan and carried forward through the comprehensive design plan, preliminary plan of subdivision, and through the specific design phases of this review process. You know, as I did previously note, staff has reviewed all the additional materials that were submitted by the applicant in opposition recently. While the opposition materials do discuss valid and important concerns, they're unfortunately not issues that are the subject of the zoning ordinance in the context of SDP 1803. Therefore, staff does recommend the planning board adopt the additional findings of staff's memo dated December 31st, 2020, to address the two specific issues of the order of remand, and then subsequently issue an amendment to the planning board resolution 2020-131, which is the subsequent item on your agenda. This does conclude our presentation, and I'm, of course, here to answer any questions. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bossie. Let's see if the board has any questions of you. Madam Vice Chair. No questions. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Washington. No questions. Thank you. Commissioner Dorner. No questions. Thanks. Commissioner Geraldo. No questions, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, we also have our attorney on, uh, Peter Goldsmith, um, our senior counsel, in the event that the board has any questions of him um, at some point. I'm going to let turn to um, Mr. Horn first to present on behalf of the applicant and then um, see where we are. Mr. Horn. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chairman, members of the Planning Board. For the record, Arthur Horn, the law offices of Shipley Horn in Largo, Maryland. Happy New Year to everybody. Happy New Year. Uh, I, uh, I'm here. Uh, you mentioned some of the individuals who are involved, uh, who are present. Uh, Ms. Brianna Wilson for 7-Eleven, Mr. Joe Caputo for the Capital Commercial Group, uh, Nick Speak from uh, Bowler Engineering, and Mike Lenhart from Lenhart Traffic uh, Consultants. Um, I, I mentioned hold them on, only hold because... Hold on, hold on, hold uh, on. Uh, Ms. Wilson, I did not mention. Oh, okay. Well, we I, don't, we don't I have mentioned... that, her sign up, so... Yeah, okay. I'm only mentioning to the point that these are individuals who were involved in the case is, is, is uh, so uh, well uh, stated by Mr. Bossy. Uh, this case is on remand for uh, two particular issues. Um, those two issues were raised by the uh, opposition at the uh, appeal of this case to the district council and the district council uh, then remanded it back to the planning board for uh, determinations of these two specific issues. Uh, let me just say that, um, you know, as Mr. Bossy indicated, this is part of a comprehensive design plan that has been uh, through the basic plan, a preliminary plan of subdivision, the uh, comprehensive design plan, and now the uh, specific design phase. Uh, I was a part of a court counsel uh, on this matter, uh, and when it came to before, actually, uh, 1802, which was the restaurant at Taco Bell, the site was heard on the same day as this case, 1803, uh, and at 1803, SDP was uh, handled by Mr. Matt Tedesco, who, in going back and looking at the evidence, and the did a fantastic job of uh, making all of the findings, uh, and, and it was all part of the record. Uh, and uh, again, we stand on uh, the record and the approval that was made by the uh, board before. Uh, you know, although the, the, the remand from the district council is very limited, it only asks two questions. I do want to point out that the process and the law of administrative race judicata does apply and that the fact that the planning board did make these findings uh, previously and, and positively uh, sort of uh, limits their ability to look at the, uh, the other determinations as to whether uh, anything um, else would apply beyond what the, the district council uh, pointed out in this particular case. And as the memo sets forth by the staff, and as we concur with 100%, uh, neither one of these provisions really apply. Uh, the, the first, dealing you know, with the uh, infrastructure was, as stated before, determined back in 2017, not appealed, made that determination at that time. Uh, the second one is uh, the purposes of the LAC zone. This property was zoned LAC. Uh, for uh, as part of the comprehensive rezoning the basic plan. Ironically, when we were going through the process and I had the uh, fortune of representing the development through this process, uh, when we were at the time of the infrastructure, at the time of the CDP, uh, when we went in front of the district council, they indicated this is the best example of a comprehensive design uh, uh, operation that they had seen because the individuals who live in those houses uh, the townhouses and cha Ralph and Chaffer right behind it, their property was rezoned part of this comprehensive rezoning. And so they went forward, built the houses first, and then they came in now with the commercial. Mr. The Warren, commercial. I need to make sure I understood that correctly. So you're saying the very same district council that remanded this matter to us said what in the prior, in the, in the prior case? And the, the CDP right. stated that the, 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 uh, uh, the I don't want to say in quote, but paraphrasing, one of the finest examples of why we have a comprehensive design zone, because it, they take in consideration the fact that they want to have connectivity between residential and commercial. 
and this was zoned as such. The residential part was built first, and then now comes the commercial. And even when we looked at this plan, the commercial is separated by wooded areas, stream valley, but there's a connectivity between the commercial and the residential. And uh, you know, all this was analyzed as we go through the process. I say all that, Madam Chairman and Board, you know, by way of background only. Again, this is a very, very limited remand on two questions that we argued that the district council didn't apply, but they wanted to have it remanded back to see, um, you know, whether the uh, planning board concurs with the argument that these uh, issues that were uh, raised by the opposition were in fact addressed and if it were addressed, whether the uh, planning board stands by its uh, original opinion. Uh, again, having participated in this previously, uh, the arguments that were made both uh, uh, at 1802 and then subsequently at 1803, this particular case, were the same arguments that were made, made on appeal, even in the record that was uh, the opposition's uh, record uh, today are the same arguments that were made and heard by this planning board previously. There's no question, as Mr. Bossi said, that the issues that are raised by uh, the opposition is very, very legitimate, legitimate concerns about health, safety, and welfare generically that's concerned, but what they're asking for is not relevant to the SDP. Uh, this particular case is more of a general policy matter. And uh, they, when they look at and try to uh, talk about uh, vapors, emissions, and things associated with a gas station, that's the Maryland Department of Environment, not the planning board. Uh, and, and any, and their evidence they put in there applies to every gas station that you have, no matter where it's located. And so, therefore, again, uh, with this uh, limited remand uh, and the fact that the Planning Board has already opined and found that the practice that is set forth for approval of a SDP has been met. It's consistent with the CDP, and it was laid out both in the uh, uh, resolution as well as the statement of justification. Uh, the Tedesco and all did fantastic, laid out all the requirements, the findings of facts and conclusions of law. Uh, was set forth we agree with that and we stand on that as well to ask the planning board to in fact uh, uh, follow up and, and and agree with what they approved before so having said that madam chairman i'll just yield because again we're at the position that although i feel as if we have to reiterate the approval because we've already been through it before and and uh, this board has already found uh, compliance previously Okay, thank you, Mr. Horn. Let's see if the board has any questions of you at this time. Um, Madam Vice Chair. No questions. Um, Commissioner Washington. No questions. Commissioner Dorner. No questions. Commissioner Geraldo. I have no questions, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so I'm going to go down our list. Um, um, Suhani, so, Chitalia. Good afternoon, Madam Chairman. Thank you so much for taking the time um, sure. to consider this matter. Um, I will actually not be speaking during um, this particular hearing. I'll be passing it off to our student attorney, Jacqueline Pepinos, and um, we have Ms. Jamila Balamani and Jennifer Jackson as well, who will take some time. Okay. Uh, so we have a number of people. We're going to ask that um, everyone not be unduly repetitive, though. Um, but you will certainly have uh, be afforded your right to speak. So, Ms. Uh, Ms. Jacqueline Capinos. Good morning, Madam, um, Madam Chair Hewlett and members of the Planning Board. My name is Jacqueline Capinos, and I'm a student attorney with the University of Maryland Environmental Law Clinic, here with my co-counsel, Suhani Chichalia. We are representing Ms. Jamal Balamani, Ms. Jennifer Jackson, Ms. Valerie Davis, and the Brandywine Healthy Neighborhoods Alliance. We ask that the planning board, consistent with the district council's order for remand, reconsider whether this gas station is appropriate in a residential neighborhood in light of available scientific studies on the detrimental health impacts of gas station emissions that we, that we provided to the board. 
I will address the issue of air emissions, while Ms. Balamani and Ms. Jackson will later testify on the impact of food swamps in the Chadsford community. The matter before you is grounded in the basic principle that a source of toxic carcinogenic compounds should not be placed in close proximity to a residential neighborhood and children's playground. The types of compounds released from gasoline, including benzene, toluene, ethylbenzene, and xylenes, also known as BTEX emissions, are dangerous and jeopardize the health and safety of nearby residents, particularly children. Based on the order for remand provided by the District Council, we ask you to address public health impacts associated with gas station emissions. We hope this hearing and supplemental materials provided will assist the Planning Board in fully considering the important health issues associated with gas stations in making your decision. The Chadsport neighborhood is primarily residential, with trails and natural spaces for local residents to enjoy. The neighborhood has pedestrian walkways that surround the area, which connects to a lake located just 0.3 miles from the proposed 7-Eleven site. The neighborhood also hosts two playgrounds, one of which is located adjacent to the 7-Eleven property line. The consideration of public health and zoning decisions is required for the Prince George's Zoning Ordinance 27-102A1, which explicitly states that the purpose of the zoning ordinance is to protect and promote the health, safety, and welfare of the present and future inhabitants of the county. In fact, when considering any zoning decisions, per the code, public health and safety is the first and foremost consideration. While under normal circumstances, building a gas station may be a matter of right, that right presumes that the health, safety, and welfare of Prince George's County residents are protected, per 27-102A1. Here, there are facts and scientific studies that eliminate that presumption, requiring the board to assess the compatibility of the gas station with neighboring land uses at this particular site. Therefore, the presumption that a gas station can be built as a matter of right is moot because there are scientific studies directly contradicting safety as an assumption. Building the gas station near residences and a playground negatively impacts the community, health, safety, and welfare. The members of the Brandywine Healthy Neighborhoods Alliance asked that the planning board deny the approval of gas pumps in close proximity to the Chadsford residential neighborhoods. Various scientific studies conducted on gas station emissions show considerable detrimental health impacts to those who are consistently exposed to gas station emissions. According to a 2019 study, benzene from gas storage tanks <coughs> constitute a health concern at a distance of up to 518 feet. It is, unclear in the it is unclear in the record how far away the gas pumps and tank vents are from the surrounding residences and playground. We ask for the planning board to clarify this issue. Furthermore, in neighboring Montgomery County, a health study established the basis for Montgomery County to increase their setback requirements for large gas stations from 300 feet to 500 feet. Excuse me. Although uh, not clear excuse from the record, me. The excuse me. Was, of the excuse me. Excuse me, Ms. Kapinas. Was that done by? I, I I heard you say what happened in Montgomery County, and they increased the setback. And was that pursuant to a, a, a county ordinance? Um. I am not sure off the top of my head. I can look that up and get back to you. Yeah, and that would be hearing. nice. And, and, and then point me to the, the similar Prince George's County ordinance that says the same thing, because that would be helpful Absolutely. for us. Okay, That's, that increases our Thank setback you. as well. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, so I will make sure to do that as soon as the hearing is over. Well, no, you got to um, do it before the end of the hearing, because the hearing is today. So, but uh, before the hearing's over. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank absolutely. You. Okay. Um, okay. Although not clear from the record, the perimeter of the 7-Eleven is in close proximity to residential properties in the Chadsport community. Studies show that gas stations pose even greater risk to young children. In accordance with these findings, the Environmental Protection Agency recognizes the particularized risks to young children and provides citing guidelines which recommend screening for gas stations within 1,000 feet of a prospective school. In the Chadsport community, a playground is located within 1,000 feet of both gas pumps and gas storage tanks, raising concerns that young people will be exposed to harmful emissions when they should be protected and safe. Thank you for taking the time to listen to the concerns of the Chadsport community. We respectfully ask that the Planning Board deny the approval of the 7-Eleven gas pumps following consideration of the health impacts associated with gas station emissions to nearby residents and children. Ms. Capinos. Um, I'd like to take, the, I'm going to see if there's any questions first, but I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for your presentation first. Um, you're a student attorney, so t can you explain that, um, 
what that means? Absolutely. So I currently work with the Environmental Law Clinic at the University of Maryland. Uh -huh. um, and so I'm working underneath Suhani, who is supervising me, but I'm now presenting to you on behalf of our clients. Does that mean you're, a, 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 are, you've already an attorney or you, you've graduated from law school and not graduated from law school? I have not graduated okay. yet. I, I'm only I'm saying that, what, what I'd like to say is, Several of us, I'm an attorney, several of us on the board are attorneys, and I wanted to commend you on doing a spectacular job and wishing you well in your future. That is the only reason I asked that question. Let, let me be clear. Not to cast any aspersions, but just to say, very well done. Okay. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, now, so, um, what about Ms. Jackson? And, and, and Ms. Jackson's going to speak as well? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Oh, no, let me see if the board has any questions of you at this time. Ms. Capino, um, um, Madam Vice Chair? No, Madam Chair, I don't have any questions, but I would like to associate uh, myself with the comments made to our presenter. I thought she did a very well, very good job. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, uh, Commissioner Washington? No questions, but I too associate myself with the comments of the chair. Great job, Ms. Capino. Um, okay. Um, Commissioner Dorner. Um, yeah, good, good job on the presentation. Um, in, in terms of the, the sort of the health concerns that you've raised, one of the issues in, in land use law is is not zoning out uses completely out of everywhere they could align in, in the county. So there's, there's case laws on different types of, of nuisances or, or externalities and if you increase it by a thousand feet to five thousand or, or, or different distances, you could essentially completely zone a, a particular use out of any possible location in the county. So as, as sort of the, the board that would approve these kinds of decisions or, or, or deny certain kinds of claims, um, we have to take those kinds of, of things into the consideration because um, there, there can be all sorts of other legal questions or, or problems that we have in, in terms of takings and um, due, due process and, and other issues that, that we we could end up in, in lots of legislation down the road. Um, so to clarify one of your concerns in terms of the distance, I, I realize that it's not exact, that you don't have an exact distance, but do you have any way of gauging the potential health risk based on the, the scientific studies that you have um, and, and exposure to the kids? So if you say something shouldn't be within a thousand feet, why? So is it because within 500 feet, there's a certain level of exposure. Is it because of the 900 feet, there's a certain level of exposure? There, there's some sort of a declining impact, um, and that's what, what I'm interested in, if you can provide any information about. Thank you. Absolutely. So in the studies we provided, there are multiple studies that dictate how far the distance should be um, from a residence. Our main concern is that, the one study that I mentioned, is that at a distance of up to 518 feet, so any, clo any closer than 500 feet normally, it becomes very detrimental. And based on the way that the community is set up now, it's within that proximity. Similarly, within 1,000 feet, it also becomes a problem. And 1,000 feet away is where the playground is located. So the majority of our studies, um, I can also cite to, if you give me a moment after this, I can look up the particular sites. But within the packet we provided you, we have citations that show that the closer you get, the worse the emissions become for those living in the area, which is also why we wanted to know, if possible, how far away they are exactly from the vents, particularly, and the pumps, because we would say that around 500 feet and closer becomes detrimental. Okay. Again, do you know, do you know how many places are within the 500 feet buffer? Is it, is it just one property, or is it the, the entirety? Because that, that would have a differential impact. Um, and, and, and differential claims on, on the other side as well for the nuisance. Absolutely. So because we weren't able to fully map out where everything was based on the schematics that we were given, um, on our estimate, a lot of the homes, the residential homes, meet that 500 buffer from where we had, um, I guess, where we tried to estimate it on our own. So the housing units right there do meet that 500 buffer. Okay, and then I'll ask you sort of a, a, a different kind of question. Um, should it be should it be the role of the the planning board to to actually deny this kind of a use, or should it be the choice of the people to reside in those kinds of places? So, 
there, there's, there's a difference of, of bringing the nuisance to yourself versus actually voluntarily going in that area and, and having the choice to be able to live there and sort of assessing the risk on your own um, and whether or not we should have a role in actually denying the ability of people to, to even do that. Absolutely. So I, when, I absolutely think that it's up to you to deny that because at this point in time, it becomes an issue of air and safety and well-being of the citizens located there. So even though they reside there now, putting in this extra gas station is just going to increase the carcinogenic emissions that they're going to be living close to, particularly because there are already other gas stations located in the area. We don't feel that this one is necessary to put right by these properties and these homes that are just going to constantly give these emissions to the residents that are living there. So um, we do feel that it should be the planning board to determine that decision, which then would positively impact the health of the community members. Okay, let me ask this question. I'm going to uh, jump in here, Commissioner Dorner, for a second. Some of these, some of the questions where you're headed, I have some questions too. They're of our council, um, um, Commissioner Dorner. But, but, um, but one of the things you said, um, Ms. Capinos, was um, about not necessary. And of course, necessity is is not a factor that we can consider. So I know I don't know you mentioned that, but we are ap that is not something that we can consider necessity. So I just wanted to um, address that real quick. And then um, go back to you, Commissioner Dorner, to see if you have some other questions. No, that, that was it. I, I appreciate um, the answers, and, and thank you for, for entertaining my questions. Okay. And thank you. Thank um, you commission, Commissioner Geraldo. Uh, Madam Chair, I don't have any questions. I just want to thank the uh, uh, University of Maryland Law School. Uh, for having this type of clinical program to uh, train future lawyers. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we look forward to seeing you in, in the years to come, Ms. Capinas. Um, okay, and then, and then Mr. Horn, I don't know if you can answer that question about the pumps, the distance from the pumps. Um, we can come back to you, but first I'm going to go to um, Jennifer, um, Jennifer Jackson at this time. Ms. Ms. Jackson, are you on the phone? Yes, I'm, okay. I'm here. Okay, that's call, she's caller too. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, you may sure. proceed. All right, good afternoon to members of the planning board. Thank you again for this platform to voice my concerns regarding 7-Eleven. My name is Jennifer Jackson, a homeowner in the Chatford Landing community. I'm simply here to plead with you all to reconsider the proposed plan of this gas station specifically speaking of the gas pump. It concerns me that the building of this establishment was approved given the close proximity of residential homes. What feasibility studies were conducted to ensure the safety of the residents? According to the National Institute of Health, gas stations pose significant risk hazards to people. As people fill up their tanks, diesel fuel or gasoline may drip from the nozzle to the ground and vapors may leak from the open gas tank into the air. This can lead to air and soil pollution. Air pollution is created when fuel evaporates, emitting toxic fumes, and when motor vehicles are running. Soil pollution can result when the fuel that is spilled on the ground builds up and seeps into the underlying, underlying soil and groundwater. Underground pipes or tanks that rush or leak contaminate other surrounding areas. So who exactly is at risk? People who live or work near may be exposed to toxic chemicals in the air, soil, and drinking water. Children, the elderly, and people of all ages who live in close proximity and who have conditions such as asthma are at a greater risk of harm. A recent analysis published by the American Journal of Epidemiology found an elevated risk of childhood leukemia among children living near gas stations. We have a playground for children a few feet away from the proposed gas station. So when this plan was approved, was the safety concerns of children and residents even considered given the proximity of this gas station? We deserve fair conveniences such as safety, quiet, and peaceful surroundings. No excessive and ongoing traffic, no concerns of hazardous smells or emissions near our home. I assumed I made a wise decision to purchase my home here. I was greatly disappointed to hear of a gas station and convenience store literally in the backyard of my home being approved by our leaders of PG County. 
residents within the Chatsworth community have an active and vibrant life. On any given day, you will find residents walking, running, bicycling. You will also see people walking their dogs, mothers and fathers enjoying outdoor activities with their children. Put yourself in our shoes. Would you want your loved ones to come home to this day in and day out? A gas station is simply not compatible within residential living quarters. I simply state these concerns for you to consider, to reconsider, and address the potential risk of citizens who would have to endure what this site could bring. We understand you all saw this as an opportunity for economic growth, but that should never be accomplished or pursued at the risk of our safety and peace. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Jackson. Um, I'm now going to turn to Jamila B um, Balamani. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Thank you. Madam Chair, you should, you're muted. Oh, I'm muted. Thank you. Uh, uh, Ms. Balamani, thank you. Good morning, um, Madam Chair and members of the board. I would like to thank you for this opportunity to once again speak. As a concerned citizen of the Chatsworth community, um, during the COVID-19 times, our community's only outlets are walking, biking, and taking our children to the playground. The gas station will expose our residents, including children, to pollution emissions. Unfortunately, no amount of safety measures for a new gas station within a close proximity to a residential area will resolve the public health threat. It should be a choice to reside next to a gas station and not a right. I'm asking the planning board to protect the health, safety, and welfare of our residents of Brandywine in Prince George's County and eliminate the gas pumps as the long-term effects could be detrimental to our community's health. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Balamani. Bal Balamani, yeah, that's right. Okay, thank Balamani. you. Thank, thank you. Um, so let me do this. Um, bef uh, before I s um, turn to our council, I guess I'd like to ask some questions so, and, and, and make a statement. That concluded my sign-up list, but, um, but, you know, we find ourselves in a predicament here, and let me just say that. And and the predicament is that this board does not enact any laws. This board must follow the laws as enacted by the county council, as enacted, you know, any state and federal laws as well, and also as determined by the courts, be it the state courts or in the United States Supreme Court. And so, um, We've heard a lot of people say that this should not be permitted a, a permitted use, but my question is to our legal counsel, Mr. Mr. Goldsmith, who determined that this use was who who put who put this in the LAC zone? What entity? Madam Chair, Peter Goldsmith, Senior Counsel. Um, it is the the the. the District Council decided to place this property in the LAC zone. Okay. And and then is this use permitted in the LAC zone? Yes, ma'am. Both the and, food and beverage store are permitted, and so is the gas station. And that was permitted. I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's a per, yes permitted use in the LAC zone. And that was determined by the count, county council who remanded this to us, correct? Correct. Okay. So my question is. Um, and then, and I know that you said that the, the section raised of um, section 27-528B actually pertains to the infrastructure, which we've already had, but they did cite this, the council cited this in their order of remand um, uh, about considering the health and safety findings. So what were the findings from the Prince George's County Health Department that were forwarded to us when this, as this case was heard? Or, or um, if, if anyone else can answer that. Well, it's my understanding that the 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 um, the site was referred to the uh, Department of Health, and this is for this SDP it was referred to um, the uh, Department of Health, but we didn't receive any response from right. the uh, health department itself. Okay, that's what um, I wanted to know. That's what I wanted to know. I'm trying right. to find out because I know we we're, we're not experts. We we send information to. 
um, the De public works and transportation when it concerns the roads or state highway administration when it concerns the highway roads. Um, and so, and, and they typically send feedback. So we did not hear anything from the Prince George's County Health Department on this. What about the Maryland Department of the Environment? What did they, what were their concerns at, at, when this case was heard? That I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, I'd have to turn to Mr. Bossy who- Or Mr. Uh, Bossy or Mr. Horn, if one of you can answer that question as well. Um, uh, Madam Chair, Adam Bossy from the okay. Urban Design Section. Okay. Um, we did not receive, or nor did we ask specifically for comments from MDE, okay. which is is typical for this type of case. Okay. Uh, environmental staff within the planning department uh, typically look at any of the applicable issues okay. under that environmental heading uh, under the zoning ordinance when we review these. Thank you. And their, so, their uh, comments were provided. Thank you. My next, and, and and thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, I do want to know if we had any information forwarded to us or any policy regarding, I mean, the county council put this, put this in, uh, this property in the LAC zone. We know that it's adjacent to um, residential property. They knew that at the time the decision was made, that, that they made the decision. They, they also put um, um, gas stations and the food and beverage in as a permitted use, which is a documented law now pursuant to council ordinance, so we must follow that now. Um, my next question is, what about um, the County Board of Health? Did they make a decision regarding, um, did they send any information regarding this uh, um, gas stations and whatnot in, in, a, in close proximity to um, the a neighboring associations or the LAC zone, neighboring um, homes or the LAC zone? Have we uh, heard? Madam Chair, Adam Bossy, we, we have not received any of that type from of the, We had no information from the County Board of Health. May I ask who serves as the County Board of Health? I'm, I'm not certain, Madam Well, Chair. Mr. Horn, can you respond to that? Mr. Horn? Who sits as the County Board of Health? Uh, yes, uh, the district council, the county council members also serve as the county board of health. So the county council who remanded this case to consider for the health um, um, considerations raised here, did, they, did, did that same county council raise any concerns as, as they said as the county board of health? I, I'm not aware. Okay, of I was just, just curious. Okay. Um, was And then somebody mentioned a feasibility study that a feasibility study should be required. Did the county council, when they determined that this was a permitted use in the ordinance, did they determine that a feasibility study would be required? Does, can anyone answer that? Uh, Chair, uh, I can answer it. It is not required. And, and again, this is part of a comprehensive design zone uh, process. And, um, you know, again, uh, the health department did comment at the time of the CDP. Uh, everything was uh, known at that time, and there was no issues with reference to this application. Again, it's basic plan, SDP for infrastructure, preliminary plan, CDP, okay. and now the SDP. Uh, you know, all those applications build on each other. And again, you know, that not only this property, but where the residents live, what I said, in LAC, when before the houses were ever built where they live, this property was on LAC. There was a big sign out front of the property saying commercial uh, uh, on 301 when they were building the houses back there. So this comprehensive design plan was uh, you know, always known at this site. And again, it was, it's something that if if the council wants to change the process or have something different. See, a gas station, by special exception, Madam Chair, uh, has additional requirements. And one of the additional requirements will, is a 300-foot setback uh, from residential. Uh, but that is not a requirement in the um, seat in, a, in a LAC zone or in this particular case. So. And the references that, and I'm not positive about this, but the references that uh, have been made uh, about Montgomery County may only apply to the special exception. But these issues were brought up at the previous hearing. Ms. Jackson and Ms. Belamonte testified uh, at those hearings, previously made these same arguments. You, you all have already uh, you know, ruled on that. 
they're coming back and asking for a re basically a reconsideration. Uh, they're asking this planning board to uh, legislate when again, as you were saying, this this is not uh, you know something to legislate on. And and then and, and what this development is like it's not inconsistent. You just step out the C A B and walk down to the villages of Marlboro, that's the LAC zone with the gas station and the shopping center and residential all there. That's the development. That's the development. There's plenty of other examples of how this operates. And uh, so in this particular case, again, they've met all the requirements uh, the, on the remand specifically. Those two issues have been uh, discussed and, uh, and, and approved by the planning board. And, you know, I know I'm probably speaking out of term out here, but yeah, you are. I think, <laughs> you know, you, you, uh, you know, again, and, and, and as far as uh, the distances, uh, you know, uh, applicants exhibit A1 uh, is the you know plan that's a part of, uh, can of you, the Can you record. help us? Can you, tr okay, maybe we can go to A1, Mr. Plan again, but while you're doing that, can you give us an, can you answer that question about the approximate distance? Uh, yeah, it's it's about, uh, and I, I have Mr. Speech on from Boulder, but it's to the playground they're referring to. It's like 531 feet. Okay. And, yes. and, and yes. Here, is, is that, okay, Mr. Caputo, you're going to respond? It's actually, it's actually Mr. Speech. I was just going to say I'm sorry. it's 531 feet to the playground, the closest playground to the convenience store. Uh, it's closer to about... I'd say 650 feet or so to the pumps themselves. And then if the, you did the tank or the vents, you're probably looking closer to 700 feet. Okay. Thank you for that um, answer. Um, okay. So th that was a key question that was raised, and, and that helps us. So, it, it, so you're saying for, with regard to the pumps, it's about 700. Okay, I think the problem that I'm having is, and I, and I can turn to our council to address some of these issues that were raised. I think the very first time we heard this case, we heard it, we heard and weighed every bit of evidence that comes before us, as we always do, as we always do. But our hands are somewhat tied when we have laws and ordinances that dictate the parameters for us. And here we have a council who dictated the parameters. They put this in the LAC zone. Um, we, we sent information to the health department. I understand the health department. I, I need some clarification here. I'm told that the health department responded regarding the CDP, which is the, the application. This is a comprehensive design zone, which means it's a three-step process. There's the basic plan, there's the comprehensive design plan, and then there's the specific design plan. The health department responded in the basic plan and also in the comprehensive design plan. Are we told now that it did, did or did not respond in terms of the specific design plan? I thought we did. it did not, but did it? Uh, Madam Chair, Adam Bossi, okay. the, the health department did not offer comments on the specific design plan. Okay, that's what I thought before, but they did on this comprehensive design plan, CDP and the basic plan in this three-step process. So um, my 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 concern is that we I think we did it right we heard everything and we we weighed everything and and we and made a decision that fully comported with the laws that have been established many of which have been established by the very county council that or, um, or and district council who remanded it to us so you know they put it in the LAC zone it is a permitted use Along with the gas station and the and the store, um, the convenience store, um, we are told that it's a roughly six hundred, uh, no, roughly seven hundred some odd um, um, feet away from the pumps. That 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 the playground is roughly seven hundred some odd feet away from the pumps. Um, but uh, and someone requested a feasibility study, but a feasibility study is is not something that we can require because it's not re required under the law. It's already deemed permitted. The council determined that. So I, I, I'm, I'm just a little bit stuck about what we can do, notwithstanding the very stellar argument that was presented. Um, um, so I guess I'm going to turn to, and then there was some issue regarding, some statement regarding the Montgomery County ordinance, setback ordinance, and I don't know whether it applies to a special exception or not, as you indicated, Mr. Horn, 
but it doesn't apply to Prince George's County at all. Um, so what Ms. Um, uh, Kapinas was going to determine is what setback requirement we have in Prince George's County to, to follow um, for, for that. Can you point to that, Ms. Um, Kapinas? Yes. I don't know if this is allowed, but can I jump in to clarify a few points? Um, I can come back to you, but I, I but I would like to answer for you to answer my question about wh what is what does it show in terms of our setback for for Prince George's County? Absolutely. So I also did find the code. Um, it's Montgomery County Code, Chapter Fifty Nine, Section okay. Three Point Five Point One Three Point C One. I can um, put that in the chat in a second if you would yeah. like. No, I, but it's essentially okay. what. It, you, it, I'm sorry, because it's not relevant. It, it, you're using it by right. way of analogy, but it's... I, right. Yeah. Um, what, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No. What it shows is that other counties are taking the situation of gas stations very seriously. Yeah. And they're using special exemptions to ensure that gas stations aren't anywhere near residences. So the point of us bringing it up is to show that other local communities and governments are taking issue with gas stations being so close to residences. So even though that's great. right now we don't have a special exemption within the exception, Prince George's exception. County, we're using it to show that it's an important issue. Okay, so I think that's wonderful. And, and and hopefully, did you bring that up to the county council who would be the body to adopt that, to approve such an ordinance, a similar ordinance in Prince George's County? I did not give that or argument, but I believe that it was mentioned in there. Okay, okay. Because that would be helpful um, if, they, if they did enact something like that. Um, because right now we're we're abiding by the ordinance that they did enact, which made this a permitted use, and so if they if they change the law, that might be very good, and that might be a good argument to raise to them, um, to, you know, for something to consider. Um, so let me turn now to um, Mr. Goldsmith. In terms of the whole where where we find ourselves in this process, vis-a-vis -vis the remand. Now, Peter Goldsmith, Senior Counsel. Can I ask Mr. Flanagan to put um, the second slide back up from um, Mr. Bossy's presentation? It just shows um, the two questions that the board must address in this remand. While he does that, I just want to say that as a uh, alumnus of the University of Maryland School of Law, I wish I wish I had been smart enough to find an opportunity to uh, argue before the planning board. That would have been fun as a student. Uh, but uh, you know, with that said. Um, I just want to point out also that the board remanded this case, uh, the district council remanded this case, um, but it still it, it never decided the merits of the appeal. And so it just remanded this, um, remanded the case for the board to address only these two specific issues. And I think, um, and I agree with Mr. Mr. Horn's character, characterization um, of the scope of this, uh, of what the board is supposed to do. Uh, on remand, and, and I agree with uh, staff's memorandum. You know, these are two very specific questions. Uh, the um, you know, for question one, the applicability of uh, section 27528B, it addresses um, uh, specific design for infrastructure. And as, as, had already been, as has already been said, this is not a specific design plan for infrastructure. It's a specific design plan for a food and beverage uh, store and a gas station. Um, and you know, as and that that section does mention um, uh, separations for health, health, safety, and welfare, but within the context of approval of the site plan, and it says, um, you know, with respect to grading, reputation, woodland conservation, drainage, erosion, and pollution discharge, and those are those are health considerations that you know that we should consider with respect to a a, a, a site plan, which is where which place um, you know, where we're talking about the locations of building, uh, streets, lighting, trails, and so forth. Uh, with respect to the second question, uh, the applicability of uh, Section 27494, um, uh, that, and, and, now that section is the purposes of the LA, as has already been said, it addresses the purpose of the LAC zone. And that has already been addressed uh, when the planning board rezone this property uh, to LAC. They determined that, it, that this property, um, I think that, what, that, that this property was um, compatible with the proposed land uses and surrounding areas when it made that decision. Uh, and 
So I, I think I, um, you know, just, I'd also like to address some of the questions that were just raised and uh, and um, at this hearing, and also that were in the backup. Uh, I think, you know, the 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 um, the opponents say that the the board should deny the development because of its proximity to homes and a playground. Now, the development, you know, has always been has has already been said it has it meets all the setbacks as far as I understand, and regulations for the food and, food and beverage store and the gas station. Um, I think there is a, a provision in the special exception um, uh, requirements for gas stations that require that require gas stations to be um, at least 300 feet from a school, but that's for a special exception. And again, these are permitted uses. Um, there was a request in the in um, in uh, the opponent's memorandum that the board consult with and obtain from the county's Department of Health a written health impact statement that addresses the adverse health consequences of adding a convenience store to an already high concentration of fast food and convenience stores. Um, yeah, the, the, the requirement under 27.527.01 requires um, the board to refer the plan to the health department to perform a health impact assessment, um, and that's to refer the plan out. You know, it was, it was referred. Uh, staff didn't receive the response, but plus the requirement that the plan be referred, you know, if that was satisfied. Uh, the code does not state that the board can't act if it doesn't receive a response. Um, and again, the board doesn't have doesn't have the authority to demand a written impact statement from the Department of, of Health. And uh, I think as Mr. Bossy mentioned, even if the, the Department of Health issued uh, such an impact statement, it would, it would be irrelevant to the considerations of the SDP. Um, you know, the, the board's authority is limited. It can only disprove a specific design plan um, if um, if it's not, if it doesn't comply with Section 27.528A and B. And as we said, Section B doesn't apply because this is not an SDP for infrastructure. And A says it, it requires conformance with the CDP, the Landscape Manual, um, that the property, the property is adequately served with program public facilities, that there would be adequate drainage, um, that the site plan be in conformance with the type 2 TCP, and so forth. Um, and all those findings were made at the previous hearing. Um, um, oh, go ahead. <laughs> Madam Chair, did you want me to add? No, no, I, did, I didn't know if you were finished or not. If you're not finished, please no. keep, continue. The reason I, I'm trying to address all of these issues because okay. of the that's fine. We want to make sure the record is clear. Yeah, right. It's because of the discussion that the, before the district council. Right. Um, now, I think there was a there was a, an assertion that all plans and development approvals need to address whether the proposed development protects the health, safety, and welfare of the res residents. You know, I look. Um, although, um, although health, safety, and welfare is a um, just close my notes, but although health, safety, and welfare is is a consideration, um, I think it's the it's the constitutional um, uh, underpinnings of a, of a zoning ordinance. And that's the the the, the board is um, must only make the findings that are required by the um, by the zoning ordinance. Um, and I think that in, in the, for special exceptions, there is a specific requirement that they must make. Um, that there, we must make a, 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 a finding that the use will not adversely affect the health, safety, and welfare of residents or workers in the area. But these are permitted uses, and that determination is already been made. Um, and I think the, the, the last question I think uh, dealt with um, with uh, air pollution and underground storage tanks, and now. Now, those are considerations for other state and, and federal agencies. Um, you know, the, the site plan and the board is limited with the required findings that it's supposed to make. I think that's all I had to say. Um, okay, thank you, Mr. Goldsmith. Um, so let me do this first. Let's see if the board has any questions of anyone at this time first. Madam Vice Chair. No questions at this time, thank you. Commissioner Washington. No questions. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Goldsmith, for that added context. Thank you. Commissioner Dorner. Yeah, I have some questions for Mr. Goldsmith. Um, 
I think for the student attorney, this is a good example of uh, on the job training. Um, you, you, you raise good good questions. Um, in, in some ways, our hands are tied just because of the nature of how this works. And, and in law school, you probably don't get into all the nuances at the local level of, of who's making what decisions and what part of the process. Um, we're not the legislative body, so we can't actually write the laws. We have to kind of go with what they've, they've actually told us. Um, so in some way, we're, we're quasi-judicial or, or even ministerial at certain points of the process, which which changes the burden of what we have to do and what we can do. Um, and, it, and, and it actually puts the burden back on the legislative body to, to change the law if if, it, if there's a problem with it, we just we, we literally don't have the authority to change certain things. Um, and, and from what I've heard from from our attorney, we, we have a very in the remand. It, it's sort of like when you go through cross examination, you can only consider certain things, and, and there's a very limited scope of that, right? So we have two things that we can consider. Um, I think in the neighborhood compatibility um, argument, the second one, we. It's actually pretty tight because presumably in the consideration of the, the land use, the, the legislative body considered everything that was available to them and, and made the right choice at that point. Um, I think the, the kind of remaining issue is, is number one on the health issues that you've raised, which are, are, are somewhat shaky and, and they kind of are in law. Like you, you have this sort of like fudge space where you have to decide whether or not um, the impact is, is great enough at certain distances um and you have to just make make choices um the one thing that i'm, I'm not sure about is that i i don't think any of the uh, of the main items that we would consider are are of concern from like the health or public safety standpoint um so if you look at like noise pollution stormwater uh, runoff and mitigation i think all those from an environmental perspective are fine um and 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 will be covered in in some way they may not be ideal but but they've been addressed the one thing that I don't think has been addressed that I'm hoping our, our council can, can talk about is, is pollution. I know that noise pollution and light pollution have been addressed, and those are called out in the, the, the 2002 general plan and, and are actually items for, for consideration. I don't think the health department actually did anything on, on potential mitigation or potential pollution from like fumes or potentially tanks in some odd situation leaking and, and kind of getting into neighborhood areas. It, and it wasn't actually a consideration at the time when they were actually writing their memo um, because the, they weren't thinking that this was going to be a gas station. So that, that didn't really come into the criteria potentially because it wasn't really the use that was, was being imagined at the time that they were, they were thinking about. Um, so the, as sort of a, a, a decision maker or vote, a voting body in this case, I'm kind of wondering what what we're supposed to do if the health department at the county level doesn't address that, and if the, the 2002 general plan doesn't actually call that out as a criteria that they're supposed to address, um, but if it is a potential health or environmental concern, um, can we even, should we even consider it from like a legal basis is, is sort of the first question. And then the second question for us to think about later on is whether or not the magnitude is actually justifiable or, or concerning. Um, so, I, Mr. Goldsmith, if, if the health department or the county council in sitting in that particular committee have not actually addressed anything on um, the gas or fume kind of pollutions coming out of there, um, do we have any kind of authority should or, to, to consider that and, and should we from like a legal standpoint? Well, the, the code requires us to only refer this out to the health agency. It says the planning board can't act mm -hmm. on for it. It says nothing about actually getting a response from um, the health department. And, um, you know, again, this, is, this uh, is just an approval of a site plan. It's not an approval of a use. We're approving the site plan. Um, and um, but with respect to this decision, uh, if you look at number, uh, it, 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 it refers it, the the, fir, the, um, the the, the re, uh, number one on the remand uh, applies the, this health safety and welfare consideration applies only to section 27528B, which doesn't apply here at all because this is not a uh, a infrastructure an SDP for infrastructure. So we shouldn't. Uh, there's no reason to make any of these considerations right now. Okay, that's that's what I 
I think it's an unfortunate answer for uh, the, the, the opposition and the arguments that have been raised today, but that's what I was looking for in terms of helping us figure out where we have to kind of like walk the line. Um, thank you. Okay, and, and Commissioner Geraldo, any questions? Uh, just one question so, to summarize. So in order for us to consider the impact of the fumes from the, uh, what we, that would really be a district council decision, wouldn't it? That they would want to change the law to, uh... Well, yeah, I, I, yes, um, but the agencies, like the, the EPA would consider, um, you know, that, that they, they regulate clean air. Um, but you know, the board is limited to the findings uh, that is required to make to an approve a, a uh, specific design plan, and that does not require them to consider um, uh, emissions from the gas station. Okay, thank you. Okay, so what I'm going to do, um, uh, Ms. Ms. Capinas asked for a couple of minutes to um, to, to respond, and then um, Mr. Horn, um, you have um, summation. You close us out. Okay, Ms. Capinas. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you all for this very intellectual discussion. I guess the most important thing that I want to stress is that when the planning board first approved the CDP, these emissions and these distances weren't considered to begin with. So our ask is to now consider them. I understand from the legal standpoint that might not necessarily be possible, but that is primarily what we do ask is that if there's a way to go back in and reevaluate with the studies that we presented, um, the second part is that I would stress, although there might be disagreement, that this is in, within your authority under 102, 27102A1, which states that the purpose of the zoning ordinance is to protect the health, safety, and welfare. So before we even get to the LAC zone, you have that initial presumption of the health and safety. And our argument is that the health and safety is not being taken into account in the situation, which would then override the LAC right. And then lastly, we just want to also stress that federal governments and other local governments have taken into account all of these very important requirements of where gas stations should be located. And if possible, we also would urge the planning board to consider those before allowing the gas stations to be put in by neighboring communities. Um, thank you very much for allowing me to speak again and for the time. Okay, thank you, Ms. Ms. Capinas. Um, Mr. Horn. Uh, thank, thank you, Madam Chairman and the board for this opportunity to speak. And I, I do uh, concur with uh, what all of you all were saying earlier about Mr. Penis and the program. And, and it's, it's fantastic. She's done a fantastic job. And I, uh, you know, agree with what Mr. Goldsmith was saying about uh, the limitation that's here. I mean, the issues that's raised by the opposition and uh, uh, Ms. Belmonte and Ms. Jackson are legitimate concerns uh, generically. Uh, they, they are issues that the district has legislatively, which this board cannot uh, address. And uh, these things, uh, you know, as, as far as uh, how the council would like to see development occur uh, in this particular case, however, uh, again, your findings and conclusions are based on the zoning ordinance, and uh, this applicant has met all the criteria from the original SDP of infrastructure through the preliminary plan, through the CDP, and now with the SDP. And, uh, and again, the, the, uh, the reason we have a remand is because they, these uh, issues, the two are on the screen, were raised by the opposition's attorneys, and the, the board did not respond. They just simply remanded and said, oh, well, let's see if these two issues apply. And, you know, you've evaluated, indicated that they do not apply, that, um, you know, the health, safety, and welfare of, uh, has been taken in consideration uh, you know, at several stages of the application process, including this one right here. Uh, and, and, you know, again, we just ask that uh, the board, uh, you know, uh, what they did before and adopt uh, its findings and conclusions uh, and address those two issues uh, as, as uh, outlined in the, the uh, amendment and outlined in the resolution uh, next. So 
again, just, you know, we thank you for the opportunity. We appreciate the overall issue. But in this particular case, this, this again, this is another fine example of comprehensive uh, you know, building and development in the county where you have connectivity between residential and commercial, walkability, separation by uh, Stream Valley and, uh, and, and uh, wooded, heavily wooded area. Uh, it is a, um, uh, it's, it's a development that I think is going to be, uh, it's already very nice, but it's really going to be nice when the commercial operates right there. And, then, and again, as you see, this is just one phase of the commercial. There is uh, there is uh, some additional commercial that's uh, lined up to go in that area as well, because uh, it was always anticipated uh, to be as such. And I think it will, uh, you know, enhance those residential developments and the community as a whole. And you'll be able to walk to and enjoy uh, the community. So I thank you for the opportunity to uh, to address the planning board. Okay. Um. Thank you, Mr. Horn. I'm going to call for a motion, but before I do, um, this easily could have come up under discussion, but I, I you know, um, I think everybody said, so we're just being a little bit redundant right now, but our hands are somewhat tied, but um, I can remember being a young attorney and a judge um, contacted me to tell me, and they took the decision under advisement, and the judge con called to tell me what a great job. I had done while the decision was under advisement. I said, uh oh, we're getting ready to go down. And, and, but it's, but it was not due to the oral argument or the lack of a wonderful presentation. It was due to the constraints that we have. And so I do want to tell you that, um, say that to Ms. Uh, Campinos that um, you've done a wonderful job on behalf of the folks that you represent. And uh, we wish you the best of the best of the luck in the future. We hope to see you again. We hope you become a member of the Bar Association here. We hope you are very, very active and productive in our legal community. Uh, and we wish you all the best. Um, it, it, it's wonderful that you have an opportunity to do this while you're a student. It's fabulous. And kudos to the University of Maryland as well. Um, I do feel like our hands are somewhat tied, as you've heard from our, our, our council. And I will just turn to uh, folks for a motion. Madam Chair, um, based on staff supplemental evaluation and analysis, and I think importantly the testimony of our counsel, uh, Mr. Goldsmith, I move that we adopt the additional findings as outlined in uh, Mr. Bossie's December 31st, 2020 uh, memo, uh, which address, addresses two specific issues uh, that were subject to the uh, district council order of remand and issue an amendment to PGC PGCPB resolution number 2020-131. We have a motion by Commissioner Washington. Second, Dorner. Okay, it's seconded by Commissioner Dorner. Under discussion, I would just add, um, and also as supplemented if the motion maker and seconder accept the, also at having weighed the presentation from the opposition as well both their written, written materials and their testimony today as well. Absolutely. And again, congratulations, Ms. Capinos. Uh, great job on your presentation. Um, and, and also, under, you know, one more thing. The, we have determined, our council has determined that those two provisions are not applicable. But even if they had been applicable, they have been, they have been discussed and disposed of anyway. So um, I just want that in, as a finding anyway. Um, okay, we have a motion from Commissioner um, Washington, seconded by Commissioner Dorner. Uh, Madam Vice Chair? But I. Commissioner Washington? Aye. Commissioner Dorner? A bit I, and um, just as part of my son in the background, okay, as part of uh, a discussion, I just also <laughs> encourage you that. Can you give just one second? One second. I'll, I'll fix it. Um, as part of the discussion, I'll also just um, recommend that if you do want to take this further, that there are always way, different ways of, of coming to the same kind of result that you're trying. Um, right. You did a great job advocating on the opposition side. Um, I think what you've heard is that actually the person or the body to, to implement these kinds of changes would more appropriately be the county council. Um, and you can, you can definitely continue to take this up. This doesn't mean that it's over necessarily. Um, but yeah, good luck in, in the future, and I will uh, I will vote in favor of the motion. Oh, okay, and Commissioner Geraldo. No, 
Yeah, I share uh, in the comments. I share in the comments of uh, the other commissioners, and uh, especially that I understand the concern, uh, but our hands are tied. And I, I encourage you to go to the district council and uh, perhaps we'll, we'll change the law. And I vote aye. Thank you. The ayes have it 5 0. Um, thank you very much. Okay, and then we will go to um, item nine, which is a, a resolution. Is do we need anything in the resolution um, other than um, the finding? Um, do we need any additional findings in, in the resolution that having weighed the testimony presented today as well? I'd like that supplemental finding in the resolution. Having weighed move, the, move approval without it being incorporated, Madam Chair. Okay. Second. We have a motion and a second. Motion by Commissioner Washington, seconded by Madam Vice Chair. Madam Vice Chair? Good aye. Commissioner Washington? Aye. Commissioner Dorner? Aye. Commissioner Geraldo? I vote aye. The ayes have it 5 0. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, good luck to you, Ms. Capinos. We look forward to seeing you. Um, next item is item 3A. Ms. Hightower, are you on? Yes, I am. Okay, Good morning. afternoon, Madam Chair, and Happy New Year to you and the members of the Planning Board. Uh, let me put on my Thank camera. You. I apologize to you real quickly. I want to discuss CB 1 2021, which adds a new use entitled Qualified Data Centers. The use will be permitted on RR zone land with a minimum of 25 acres. The use will also be permitted in the CO, CSC, MAC, EIA, MXT, and all industrial zones if certain development standards are met. Staff supports this new and emerging business use as a way to implement Plan 2035 and to diversify the county's tax base. We have drafted a revised bill which suggests amendments to CB1 2021. Amendments include adding locational requirements and prohibiting data centers and regional transit districts, local transit districts, neighborhood centers, or campus centers except for the Bowie Mart Campus Center because of its proximity to power lines and MXT zoning. The bill sponsor has proposed permitting data centers on RR zone land outside of resident regional transit districts and staff supports this option. We reference the state definition section for qualified data centers within the bill that we propose uh, so that a new legislation will not be needed if the state definition changes. Uh, our bill also created a new subsection for data centers to add design standards currently listed under the current definition within CB1 2021. We also added procedural regulations requiring site plan review during building permit and added all other development standards under this subsection. Staff recommends that the planning board vote to support CB1 2021 with amendments as recommended in the revised bill. Thank you. Um, thank you, Ms. Hightower. Questions or motion? Move approval, Madam Chair, and thank you, Ms. Hightower, as always, for the thoughtful and thorough memo. Second. Second. We, have, we have a motion by uh, Commissioner Washington, seconded by Vice Chair Bailey. Vice Chair Bailey? But I. Commissioner Washington? Aye. Commissioner Dorner? Aye. Commissioner Geraldo? Aye. Okay, the ayes have it 5 0. Mr. Hunt? Um, important question, and I'll have another one for you next week, but anyway, important question. Don't, yes, don't, don't, don't think you're getting by me. Uh, um, um, is there any... Oh, Madam Chair. Yes. I'm sorry, before, before Mr. Hunt goes, happy birthday, Jessica. Okay. <laughs> happy birthday. Everybody say happy birthday, Jessica. Um, happy birthday, Jessica. <laughs> she just I'm sure she's just shaking her head. She stepped out. Um, okay. So with no other business to come before the planning board today 
And you just you did say that, right? Or did I, you finish? I, I did. I did not, but I've concurred oh, with what you just said. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. I guess I'm jumping the gun. Planet board is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank everybody, you. everybody, please stay safe. Happy Martin Luther uh -huh. King Day. Please stay safe, everyone.